All right, let me let some people in here. Oh, all right, cool. How's everybody doing? Good, man. How are you? Fantastic. Good. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's another Wednesday, so lead generated webinar. It is like a polar vortex or something is is moving through Austin right now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's temperature supposed to go down to like seven degrees on on Monday, which is oh, like, it's it's been real cold up here. Wow. Yeah, where are you at, Stephen? Uh, Minneapolis. <sighs> what can I only imagine, man? <laughs> it was it was like negative 15 the other day so yeah i don't know what i would even do with that <laughs> all right cool so um, i'm just kind of letting a few people still jump on here i've got some things to go over first um i'm going to shift the format a lot for these these wednesday calls to try to really you know over the past it's been me just kind of like fielding questions and i think you guys will get more out of it if um if I, if I have like part of it where I can, we can answer questions and go over stuff like that, but also having kind of a game plan based on what I've seen, some of the stuff that you guys are struggling with. So uh, this week, one of the things that I want to go over is kind of niche selection and the due diligence process. I think it's super important um, to choose the right places. You know, I, I've gone back and forth. I know a number of you guys have messaged me about like, hey, what do you think of this niche or this situation? And um you know, it's everything, there, there's everything, everything needs to be evaluated separately, right? There's not, there's like, it's not necessarily that, that a niche is like, hey, this is like a really good niche or, or a bad niche. It's, it's a great niche pending a lot of other variables, right? So um, I think that's how you got to look at it. There's one guy that was, that was reaching out to me. He's about to have 30 sites using like the, the done for you option. Right. And he's like, what do you think? I'm going to limit it to these cities and these niches. What do you think? I'm like, I don't know because I haven't evaluated the, like every market is completely different. And, and that's something you guys really need to think about when you go in and you try to choose these niches. So for today, obviously, I'm going to take questions. I'm going to go over some of the new updates that we had an update that, that came out this morning. Small update. Um, we still have like a big batch of updates that we keep putting off. We keep um, testing and trying to find issues. And we're, we're finding little issues here and there. So uh, we're still kind of working through working through that so that we can get those ready. But we do have a big, um, we do have kind of like a big update that is, uh, that we're gonna roll out all at once. So um, hopefully we can get that out in the next week. If not, um, you know, the next two weeks, we're just, you know, there's a, a lot of moving pieces here that are, that are slowing things down for us. But um, we've got some exciting stuff coming for you guys for sure. So. Um, before I get into it, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to take you guys through um, the, the, the update that we released this morning. Um, so I know that a number of you guys have had issues with the connection with CallSling. Um, so one of the issues that we had is that CallSling, um, well, they changed the location of the playback files, which caused a lot of you guys not to be able to um, see be able to play back your file. So we believe we fixed that issue. So if any of you guys have had that issue, it should no longer be an issue. Um, we've also, uh, I'm not exactly 100% sure on the rollout of this part of it, but we now have the ability so that you can add multiple call selling accounts to, so some of you people that have like um, two or more call selling accounts have, have requested that. And furthermore, you can now um, map your call selling phone numbers directly to a company rather than having to go through like a company or a campaign and having that map to a company within lead generated, you can choose on an individual number basis. So it gives you a lot more control. Okay. So some, there's, there's some of the like costling updates that we had. So let me share my screen here and let, let's go over. Um, all right. One second here, share screen. I'm just going to show you the update that we released. I know that a lot of you guys, it's a, have been, have been kind of waiting on this one for a while with the ability for, to like have a little bit more control over the notifications. So, so uh, Jeff, give me a thumbs up. Can you see my, uh, can you see my screen, Jeff? Okay, cool, right on. All right, so this is an update that 
is not out yet, but this is one we're working on where um, I know like with the, the forms, you guys are struggling with like, we're relying now too much on custom CSS, which um, not, not everybody knows. I would say the majority, the minority of people know, right? The majority of people don't know custom CNS, CSS and how to like adjust that. So what we're doing is we're gonna be rolling this update out really soon where you, um, you can control the form a lot more, right? So if you click on this edit button here, you're gonna have the ability to choose like the, the text, the color, um, all sorts of different stuff here. And there, we've actually got an update to this. It seems like I'm stuck in here now. Um, so we've actually got an update to this as well. So this is a, probably not gonna be the final version. Let me just refresh this. This is doing something weird. Okay, let's go back in here. So we go through design. There we go. And um, all right. So you'll be able to come through here and a lot of those settings where you would edit for your client will now be over here, but you also have the ability to change the background color, the field, the, um, the button, um, the, the bottom color. I'm not exactly sure what that means in that text there. You can change the, 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 the margin and uh, you know, some, of those, some of those features there as well as changing the button color, changing the button text, changing the font size, this type of thing. It's gonna be a drag and drop from over here um, this is the new look for the custom field. So I think it's just a little bit cleaner. So this is part of where we're moving with the website form. So that way you guys can have more of this control, more of the um, kind of like form builder style where you don't have to rely on CSS and, and, and like custom coding type of stuff. So we're gonna keep leveling this up, but um, I'm hoping to have this one out um, probably in the next like 10 days, this part of it. The one that came out today, um, I know that uh, it, it, your, your username says Cardinal Marketing. I imagine that is not your real name, um, but I saw that you requested this. I don't know if you saw the, the video that I posted, but uh, this update is now live where you see that there's a feature for new call. So as your stuff comes in from CallSling, then um, you have the ability to get an in-app notification, which is up here in this top area, or an email, okay? so. Um, this, I think, there, I think there's more updates to this. I've had this update live on our test for a little while, so it's sometimes forget what the previous version looked like, but um, you can select all your companies and apply these updates, or you can select them at a comp one company at a time. Okay, so the in-app notification is this up here, and email is, is whatever email is associated with the account that's setting it. We've got the same stuff for GMB here, where um, we, I, I think we, there was some confusion with how this worked in the past where it appeared that it wasn't working, but we had a pretty confusing user interface. So we've kind of, we've made some small adjustments that I think makes it a lot cleaner. You also now have the ability to get notified uh, when a questionnaire comes in, a new questionnaire. Okay, so um, that is the notifications update there. All right, so um, let me check the chat here. Does anybody have any questions before we get into, um, what one of the subjects that I want to cover for today. Any, anybody struggling with anything? Hey, Patrick, uh, Lou mentioned in the Facebook chat that the GMB is not automatically updating. Is that a known issue? He's finding out a suspensions only after he views the individual GMBs. Um, finding out things are suspended only. Um, so this is not a known issue. And, and, and actually, um, you know, in my own agency that we use this platform, we've been getting, you know, we, we had a couple suspensions and we had a couple that we like pulled out a pending over the last week and we've gotten those notifications in real time. So uh, one thing that I would just, uh, so like two things, Lou, like one is if, if after, we, after we go through kind of what I'm about to show you, if the settings are not set up correctly, then let's create a ticket because uh, that shouldn't be the way it is. It's not a known issue. It seems on our, with, our, with my agency as, as um, soon as yesterday, we had one come out of pending and, and I was able to get the notification for that in real time. So um, I haven't heard that from anyone else either. So I'm, here is what I want you to check though. You have two different areas where you can go to check this uh, GMB setting. One is if you go up here and then you click on settings, okay? And then you choose GMB. So it's up here in this little bell, click on settings and then go over to GMB, okay? And then you can select the individual 
GMB. So in this case, we only have this one. And you're going to want to make sure that the status change is set for, for that GMB. Okay. Another spot that you can get to this same area, which maybe is a little bit more intuitive, is if you go to Google and choose the GMB locations, and then you click on view, and then the, the last tab, once this loads, it's got to pull in all that information from Google. Okay, once this loads, if you go over to notifications, this will sync, right? So it will say the same thing. So the GMB status, you just want to make sure that is checked. And you may want to check the email. So for my account, I, I always check the email because I want to know the minute if something gets suspended. So uh, Lou, if you can just let me know if, if that in fact is, is checked or if there's an issue there uh, and you know, um, if that, if that stuff is set up the way it is, um, I would, ch you know, check if it's, if the, for the in-app notifications, make sure you review your history of notifications to see if those suspensions are hiding there, if that was in fact checked. And then for email, if it was checked, I would also ask that you just check your spam messages to make sure that you didn't receive it because um, I haven't heard of this being an issue with anyone. And I think that, uh, you know, we've got thousands and thousands of GMBs in there. So I feel like that's something we would have heard of if, if there was if other people. And I, and I know for my own agency, we're not having issues with it. So um, I'm suspicious that one of those two things will solve it. Um, so Brad, can I find training video on removing the address after the GMB verification? So we don't have that ability right now within our application. So you would need to make that change within the actual Google dashboard. That's something I think we're gonna be uh, looking to add really soon. So just so you guys know, all of the functionality that we have is kind of like granted to us by Google. So Google has to allow us to be able to remove that address. I think that they do. Um, I know that a number of other people have asked for that, that same feature. So it is something that if it is possible, we will absolutely be adding it, but currently it's, it's not available within our platform. Okay, cool. So, um, All right, so, oh, okay, I see Lou, um, you responded. It says, it seems like it updated the red, green before. Okay, yeah, so it seems like it's picking up the status in real time, but maybe it's just not, uh, maybe there's some issue there with the way that you have the notifications configured there. Okay, cool. So does anybody have any other issues, questions, things they're stuck with? All right, so I know, um, for those of you that were on the call or watched the call last week, um, did anyone try the the, um, the fast money strategy that I mentioned? I think Sawyer, I, I see she's on the call now. Um, she said she tried it and she actually had some pretty good success with it. She has somebody interested in purchasing a site. Um, was there anybody else who gave that a try? No, nope. Sawyer, do you mind taking the mic for a minute and just kind of telling us what you did exactly and, and how it worked and what happened? Sure. Um, I didn't get into it like uh, a whole bunch. I actually kind of got lucky with one of the first people that I kind of contacted, but I ended up just joining a um, Facebook group like you had mentioned. Mm -hmm. And I kind of just looked through it a bit and it was for like contractors and stuff. And like, I was literally just scrolling through. And I saw this one guy who posted a lot and I just noticed that he didn't have a website. So I took a quick look um, at his like Facebook profile. He was pretty active with it, advertising his business and stuff. He seemed pretty young too. And I thought it was kind of weird that he didn't have a website. So I just built him something quickly on Snaps. I know you suggested you can also hire someone to do something like that. Um, but in my case, I just decided to build it. So I went ahead and did that. I threw his logo on and stuff and uh, I literally just sent him an email. I didn't even do a screencast, which I probably could have. And I just sent him an email. I said, hey, like check this out. And he's like, he loved it. And so now we're gonna, um, I'm gonna send him a screencast tomorrow of some more in-depth details of what I have to offer him. But um, yeah, so literally first first try, it one went one, well. Huh? I'm sure that wouldn't happen for everyone and it might not happen every time for me in the future, but it was definitely like quite a su good surprise for me. So, cool. yeah. So you said that you, you sent him an email, but you connected with him on Facebook. Did you send him like a Facebook message or an actual email? Uh, an actual email. Like I just saw his profile on Facebook 
Oh, and he had I his email stopped. listed or something? Yeah, yeah, he did. Okay. And then um, in that, so in that email, yeah, you just wrote him like a short message yeah. that said, what, sure. can you kind of give us your delivery? This um, in the email? Yeah, I just said, I said, um, hey, I'm in the blah, blah, blah Facebook group. I was super straightforward. Um, I noticed that you didn't have a website. Uh, check this one out. I just made you a demo and he just responded from that. Okay. And you threw him, you threw, you found his logo and put his logo on it? Yeah. He also had a promotion video and stuff. So I added that in too. And Super I made it personalized for him. Yeah. I made it to his, all of his colors and stuff. And uh, he had some like random posts and stuff. Like he had a specified account for um, his business. And I just added some of his content into it. It really looked like his, um, his website. So. That's awesome. How long did it take you to put this together for him? I actually looked at the time because I was curious, like how long would this take me if it um, was just me doing this every time? And I, it took me from like 7.30 p.m. to like 8.20 p.m. Like it didn't take me long because like the snaps um, like platform is really easy. The templates are basically done for you and it was super quick. So it took you less than an hour. And, and now that you have this, if you were to change, like, let's say that this guy didn't respond and it, or for whatever reason, it didn't work out with this guy. How long would it take you to change this from what you have now to a different company? Maybe change the colors and slide in a different logo. Oh, like two minutes, probably. Two minutes, right. So you guys put yourself in the, this, what she did, put yourself in this business owner's shoes. And let's think about something for us. Maybe, there, maybe there's something that, that we need right? As business owners. If somebody were to um, deliver us something with our logo on it for our agency, and it's just like tailored to us, and it's just obvious that they like, not only does it feel personalized because she took the time to put that logo on it, it took her less than an hour. And now it's going to be two minutes for her to be able to bounce this off tons of different contractors. It's a really powerful prospecting when you serve this up and it appears that it's so personalized to this person. But it really what, you, what she's made is like a cookie cutter template that she can just take and go again and again and again. It's just, it's really powerful when you do this. And like, you know, even for people that have existing websites, you could do, some, you could kind of combine this with reputation management. You could combine this with the heat map tool and be like, hey, this is how your website's ranking. Here's a website that's designed to rank better because it has content. Content's one of the most important things for ranking a website. So this is what we've structured it in a way where we have a lot of content, but maybe it doesn't seem like a lot of content, right? So that's the type of websites we build because they're designed to pay for themselves and make, make money, right? So I know that you were asking for $750, right? I think that's what you had posted in the group. Mm -hmm. um, I easily think you could probably double that for, for anybody that's got like a semi-successful business, like $750 doesn't. I mean, that's, 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 I don't know what this guy, that's probably less than half a job, right? He probably charges more for his stuff than $750. If for, I mean, I don't know what type of contractor is, but most contractors, when they start to like move into that higher ticket space, this is something that, um, you know, hey, this, this, this can sell itself, right? This, this is going to pay for itself over time. So, hey, uh, awesome job, Sawyer. Uh, hopefully you guys find some encouragement in that. I think it's a, like, like I said, I kind of put myself in your guys' shoes and I'd say, what would I do if I needed money fast? That would be one of the strategies that, that I would definitely put into place. I would be sending out email after email. And um, I, think it was, I think it was Jason that had asked me, how are you going to set this up? So the method that I um, recommended was to, to, for those of you guys who didn't see it, go back and watch it last week but you can essentially buy a theme off of theme forest for like 60 bucks. And it's going to come with 15 or 20, sometimes 50 pages and a lot of different versions of the site. And then you can hire somebody off online jobs .ph for probably $4 an hour. And they can probably set this thing up in 15 minutes. Right. So for like $63, you could have this set up. And then what I would do is I would say like, whatever my agency name is. So for instance, if it's like Sawyer's agency.com slash, and then I would have like plumbing and I would send this person a link or maybe it's like the name of their agent, the name of their company. 
and they can just car carve. They should be able the, the that person from online jobs should be able to copy that thing in less than two minutes. They should be able to create a new directory. So it'd be sawyersagency.com slash Tom slash Jeff slash Harry, right? So it's like makes it seem personal. The more personalized, obviously the more time, but the better your conversion rate is. So you want to kind of balance that, right? Uh, maybe find a bunch of people with the same name. I don't know. Um, okay, cool. So any other questions or comments on that strategy? I highly recommend it for, for those of you guys that are trying to get started. I know it's like, there's a learning curve there. There's a learning curve to try to hire people, to try to like deal with this, but that's how I would do it. Cause you can pay someone who's an expert in WordPress $4 an hour essentially and get this. I know like snaps um, is a product that, that apparently is easy to use. Um, with the WordPress sites, you don't have a monthly bill associated with them. So it's up to you, whatever you decide works best for you guys. Um, I think they both have their pros and cons, right? So um, any questions regarding that? Anybody who needs any clarification on anything? Nope. Um, Patrick, uh, this is off that, off that topic subject, but Don asks, is there a way to shake pending and GMB from lead gen? From lead generated, I assume he's... Yeah, not really through lead generated, but we, we've had success with in our agency is just um, constantly reaching out to Google support and, and asking them like, hey, what's going on? You want to kind of take the buffoon strategy of I'm a business owner and hey, look, this this is my business and, and like, I really need to get this live. Um, you know, I've heard how important it is to show up on the internet um, and we're dealing with okay. COVID and it's, what can we do to get this live? Oh, and if they it's ask under the couch. For, I put it there. Hold on one the second. Me, I got it. One second. Okay. So um, I really need to get this thing live. It's just affecting our business, trying to support my family here, whatever, whatever that kind of language is, I would be going back and forth with this. Remember that Google is not like, they're not the police. Right. This is this this is just a company, right? So um, you know, an another strategy that I've heard is successful when if Google is, responds to you, they may ask you for a business license. And I've heard that people have had a lot of success with just like photoshopping a business license from that state and, and changing it. So I'm not condoning or saying anything, but I've heard that has been um, you know, I've heard that's worked for a lot of people to get like as a validation for um, getting it out of Google. I think getting a DBA in most in most states is probably going to be less than twenty five dollars. I've heard that Google is scanning like the Secretary of State site and looking for validation that this is a real business, right? So you can set up DBAs. Jeff, maybe you know more about this. Is there any kind of limitation on on DBAs and setting those up? Or it's it's all state dependent. If you just search uh, DBA and the name of the state that you're inquiring about or go to the Secretary of State website for whatever state you're inquiring about and just search on there for DBA information. And it's a pretty simple form. It's like a one page form with some basic information. And most of it is probably done online actually. Pretty simple to do, but every state is gonna be a little bit different. Right, right. Okay, cool, thanks Jeff. So uh, Matthew James says, isn't that illegal? So like I said, um, I don't, I don't know the legality of it. I'm, I'm not saying like, this is what we do. I've just heard that that is a way that people have got around Google's um, verification stuff. So um, I'm not, obviously I'm not an attorney. And even though Jeff is attorney, he's not providing you guys legal advice. Yeah, with, not, not providing legal advice, but I, I would think that, you know, fraud would be if you were doing that to a governmental agency or something like that. I mean, breaching Google's terms and conditions is like, whatever yeah yeah but that's what i mean google's not the police they're not some like yeah. government agency they make up their own their own rules on what's going to cause a suspension and what's not so um but you you do what what uh you think is is the best strategy for this in the end guys like what we're doing is like we have we have the ability to make it have a tremendous impact on these business owners right when we're doing sales you guys i think the ones that that struggle with sales and the ones that are successful with sales one thing that helped me when I was trying to close people is at the beginning, you got like that Maslow's pyramid where you're trying to get your own needs met, right? And you're focused internally on your own, on your own stuff. Like, Hey, I need to get this. Cause I want to, I want to pay for my tuition or I want to like 
I, I need money coming in because I've got to like feed my family or I've got to pay rents or whatever. So once you get past that point and you've got your needs met and you really start to focus on externally and you focus on the people that we're helping, this is where sales becomes a lot easier. You make this about them, right? What we're doing by bringing these people leads, some of these people are struggling, right? And they, they need this business. So Google has put some stuff in place to try to prevent like, um, you know, part of it is to prevent the Legion business model, right? They, they don't, they don't, it's not like we're friends, right? So we're actually helping people. We're finding good contractors. We're finding like, hopefully you guys are taking it within your business to vet these contractors. And, you know, for me, I'm not working with anyone that's unlicensed when a license is required. So by positioning these people, I'm not working with anyone who's going to get bad reviews. It's just, it's not going to be a, a, a good relationship. So what I'm doing is I'm finding the people that are going to be do a very good job and take care of these customers and actually care about people. And I'm gonna position them in a spot where they get the most visibility, right? So you need to think like when you're going through your sales process, that the challenge is really to get these people out of their own way because they don't trust you. But I know what we've done and I've seen the effects that of, of sending these people tons of business for years has had on, on their business, on their family dynamic, you know, it's, it's amazing and it is so rewarding to do that. So, you know, I'm not going to let like Google's got these stupid rules of like, well, you can't have this, you can't have a, like, a, you can't have it set up at an address that's not, so like, this is one of Google's rules. You guys have probably broke this rule already. Google wants the owner, that's the address that you're allowed to use for a GMB. It's the owner of the business, not, any, not even an employee, right? So I'm not going to let that rule be the reason that this family with this person who's got all this experience and can't be found on Google and really loves it and passionate about this and cares. I'm not going to let that rule be the reason that, that they don't get the business that they need. Like, like, I don't view Google as like God and they get to like, just decide everything. Right. So, um, that's my own personal thing. You guys view this your own on, on how, uh, on how you'd want it. So uh, how you want to set things up. Like everybody's got their own different um, pieces on the viewpoints on this stuff. Okay, so um, any other questions, anything I'm missing in here? Uh, Patrick, Shirleen is asking in the Facebook chat how people are tracking their lead gen sites and if there's any way to do that through lead generated. Like with the work that they've done. I, I, yeah, I don't think there's anything in lead generated. We just use spreadsheets for that. Most How are most people keeping track of all their lead gen sites and the work that needs to be done after they're built? Google Sheets, any way lead generated can help with that. Okay, so this is actually one of the changes we're working on um, with lead generated. What I really want to happen is we're going to be expanding everything related to companies. Okay, so some of the stuff that I want to be pulling in here is like all like you can build your own profile essentially for a company. So that means if you want to create a checkbox that says, um, you know, have citations been done for this company, then you can have that. And then applying that sorting and searching and filtering. So pretty much like we've done here, right? Where we go to all leads and, and all this stuff is customizable, right? And sorts, you can search and sort and filter by all of these different columns and you can make as many of these different columns as you want. Wouldn't it be great if we could do the same thing for companies and if we could do the same thing for GMBs and we could use that to keep track of kind of like statuses that exist. So that's where I'm taking it. Currently, there's not a way that to do it. One thing that I would recommend for you guys is Airtable. It's a lot like Google Sheets, but it's just, it's a lot better to be honest. Um, let me see if there's one, it's, they have a paid version, but the free version, I've never paid for it. The free version goes a really, really long way. Let me see if there is like an example one. Um, Asana and Trello are also really good uh, solutions. I'm not, I've never used Trello. Jeff, is Trello, I think you use that. Is Trello yeah. free? Trello does have a free version. There are certain pieces of it that are very handy when it's paid, like connecting to your Google Drive and allowing you to, connect documents and things like that to the different cards and properties that you have. 
I really like Trello because it's more visual and I'm a more visual person rather than spreadsheets, which are, you know, just absolutely linear and, and uh, brain numbing. So that's just me, but you know, either one can work. I, I certainly have used both and, and had success in both. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah. So I, Jeff's used Trello quite a bit. I've used Asana in my agency. So Asana will take you a really far away. It, so I'm not going to go through my personal project on Asana just because there's a lot of proprietary company data. This is a sample thing. Um, this is this is Airtable, right? So Airtable.com. It's free. There are paid versions that extend the functionality. So what I like about Airtable, okay, is first of all, you've got they make it really easy where you can come up here and kind of say, let me add in a filter. So show me the, uh, only show me the records where session type equals initial interview and it'll eliminate those. And then you can combine these filters and I can say, and, or, so let's say, or this other random condition. So maybe I want feedback score to be equal or less than or greater than. And so it goes a really long way. And then you can save these different views. So I could save this set of filters as a view. And they've got calendar integrations in here too, where you can view things if there's dates, you can view it by calendar. You can use forms. So you can create a form for any one of these. And then you could send people this form and then they could fill it out. And then that form data would be saved um, inside the table. And then it also kind of works like, this may be confusing for you guys, but there, it, it works as a relational database, okay? So what that means is that I could tie, let's say I have a record over here in users that's related to this, then I can actually have those be related right here. You can see that this person interviewed, this, that's what this is right here. If I click on this, this is the data that's stored on some other table for this user. So it's really powerful um, a lot, a lot more powerful than Google, Google Sheets. So I know that a lot of people use this for project management. I use this for organization. So in our agency, I'll have like my website listed here with all the information about the site. And then I have all these different views. So I might have one that's like, Hey, here's, here's my, maybe I have a, um, a tab over here that has a list of my clients. And I have a tab here that has a list of my websites. And then I can have a relationship between the websites and the clients. And I can say, okay, show me all the websites for this client, which you can do in lead generated, but there's just like some extra like sorting and searching and you can build these tables and relationships really, really quickly with this. So I encourage you guys to, to try that out as a way for organization. Another one, the ones that we mentioned for those of you guys who haven't heard it are Asana, right? Just spelled like that. So if you go here, um, I think it's free for like the first 15 users. And then Trello is the other one just spelled like this. Okay. So yeah, Trello. Just, just based on what you just showed there, Patrick, I mean, clearly the functionality of Airtable for this business model is much more robust than Trello. Trello, again, you know, it has a lot of visual aspects to it that, that I really tune into. So I, I would just check it out and see you know, what makes sense for you and the, also how large your agency is or how many sites and GMBs you're managing. If you're managing 10, your solution is going to be a lot different if you're, if you're managing 100 or 1,000. Definitely take that in consideration. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So, Harry, I know that you had a question, um, a ticket, and I'd like to just go over that quickly because it's, it's a ticket that I've seen a bunch of different times. So, the one that I'm talking about, Harry, is um, you had mentioned that how do I keep track of statuses, right? You, you had asked something related to that. Can, can you yeah. just like maybe let, let me hear that question in your words to the group? Hey, hang on. Let me go to um, let me go to the screen that I'm talking about. Oops. Trying to change yours. <laughs> Cool. That's why he's doing that. What's up, Gary Patterson? How are you doing, man? Can't figure out how to unmute, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was just in the middle of trying to chase um, that Trello doc I posted up about a little second ago. 
Um, J.R. Fent uh, put something together a few years ago. There was a really good workflow from beginning to end. Um, and uh, I was just trying to chase that up to see if that might help help everyone. Yeah, I Absolutely. like that too, Gary. I have that um, access, have had access to that in the past. And, and actually it was a, a group of people who used that as a foundation and built out even greater processes around it. So I, yeah. I like that Trello for you know, using to track the processes of, of creating and ranking um, these in, in sites. You know, just on track with the flow. Yeah, like you said. Yeah, I, th I think using a platform like that um, even within a group like this where people can develop um, techniques outside of the box um, that even someone as right. sharp as Patrick has, has done um, and then being able to share that within, within a group without having to um, spend time to be able to do that, I think is a, mm -hmm. uh, a great thing. So if there's um, something that's Trello has been around forever, um, maybe there's a, a better platform for, for that sort of thing these days. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, um, Jeff, is that something that you could like throw into the, um, like the file? So is it, is it a file or is it a link? No, it would be a link to the Trello board and I would have to look and see if I have a clean version of it. Okay. And I, I don't know if JR initially, um, shared that to everyone, or if that was something that was shared among friends or something. I got it through another another group of JKers yeah. got access to it, and so it wasn't my board. You know, yeah, I did just, share it to just... the whole JK group. Oh, he did. Okay. Yeah. yeah let, let me. Let me. You guys, if one of you guys, you guys find that, if you don't mind throwing it into the the lead generated group. Um, so as you guys saw, um, we obviously we started the lead generated group. So if you guys know other users, I'm, I'm trying to get the users from it into the group, um, which turns out I'm, I'm not friends with a lot of those people. I've tried to go through and, and make that connection, but any of you guys feel free to uh, make that invitation to get people in here. If you, if you, you know, see some people that you think that this might be useful for, um, happy to have them in here. We're gonna continue to do these calls on, on Wednesday evenings. And it looks like um, Lawrence, posted a link in there. Maybe uh, Gary or Jeff, if you guys can double check and see if that's the one you guys are talking about. Okay, cool. So Harry, were you able to figure out your yeah, um, yeah. question on that your, you had? Yep, on, your, on the screen you're on right now, yep. uh, over on the right-hand side, click on view on any okay, one over of them. Here. Yep. And I'm doing the same thing. So on the lead details screen, click enable editing. Okay and then scroll down to progress, click on the drop down arrow. Yeah. Okay, what I want is custom codes in addition to those. Okay, so Not, this I don't field, want a different field because I, that field is a, is a required field, right? right. So this you're, field, you're gonna be using it in your CRM and everywhere else. Yeah, um, right now we don't have the ability to edit this field. Yeah. Just because there's um, the reason that we prevented that field from being edited, as well as I think it's lead type is the other one. Throughout the CRM, there are we're relying on those fields, right? Understood. So what we've given you, you could make another field, and I know that you know that by the way you phrased your question there. Um, so that would probably be your best option you can use the, another field just like this field, right? Yeah, well, I understand that, but, but what I don't, and, and for the very, very short term, that would work, okay? But long term, because, you know, I think I probably told you, I was, I, I may have had the first CRM in existence back in the 80s. So I've had a lot of experience working with CRMs. In the long term, I know where you, you're going, I know directions you have to go in as you build out the CRM capabilities of this thing. And how you handle this particular issue, and there, I know there are also multiple ways to handle it. You know, my way, my experience is, I'm asking you for something I was used to using years ago, but my experience is that uh, not only me, but lots of other people will need different fields for the type of progress. For instance, there's one step in progress would be the sale was made. 
right? Yeah, but I, so my question for you is, um, why use this? Like you could, you could, you could have a, a like we could, we're probably, I was actually thinking of changing this to be called delivery instead of progress. So you could have another field. Let's, let's imagine this is called delivery because really yeah. what this field is supposed to do is it's supposed to track to make sure that all your leads get to your clients. That, yes. That's its purpose. Right. It's not meant to be like a progress in the sense of tracking like the pipeline of the sale. Right. So you are welcome to create that field. Like if you were to go here, you could obviously come in here and make a progress to progress or to select it, box right. with all the different right. fields that you want right. in here. Right? right. So yeah. Bid I'm sense. clear about that. What's that? I'm clear about that. Okay. Is there a reason that, that in your use case, is there a reason that we can't do it the second way with the extra field? I think you can probably, I can do it that way short term, but I know it won't work, work long term because that's not going to be the field you use to show the stage of the sale. You know, you talked about, I think you showed a rough, gave us a rough idea a couple of calls back about how you were going to construct the CRM aspects as you start building that part the out. pipeline, yeah. Right, and it's going to, and, and what you're describing obviously is a model that Pipe Drive uses and other CRMs, right? right? So that's the feel that's going to be if and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but won't that be the feel that dictates where the sale is? No, it won't. What are you going to use? So, something new? Yeah. So we've got we've got you can essentially make your own um, custom pipeline. Which is exactly what I want. Yeah. So that's okay. that's coming out so, in our in our. So, yeah. you know, just uh, go ahead and kill that ticket for now. Okay. It's, this is not critical to me right now. I can make this work. What's going on is I've got a client that I'm nursing a little bit because he's he's like Stone Age. I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to disparage the guy, but we all have seen him. And what I want to do is track his leads a little bit and help him get through this. This is something I'm doing. I'm making money on it, but this is something I'm doing more for a friend than anything. So I'm yeah, getting his yeah, leads. And I'm tracking where they are, but you know. And then I get on the phone with him. I say, this is what you need to do with this guy. And this is what you need to do with an excellent and so on and so forth. But I can, I can certainly make that work half a dozen ways. But I was right, just in, right. probably I think what you're looking jumping for, ahead and anticipating what you were going to be doing. Yeah, this, this, is the up, this is part of the update that I was mentioning at the beginning of the call that I'm hoping to have live in the next week to two weeks. So it's, it includes um, our contacts area, but this is the pipeline where essentially you'll be able to drag this. And then, so this is kind of what you're asking about is the deal stage. Yeah. So that's exactly. going to be something that you can create custom and manage this. And you can That'll make as many it. different pipelines as you want. And then you can yeah. have the pipelines, you can assign pipelines to clients. So that way a client can use this as their CRM, right? right. And then- you can set up dependencies on the pipeline as well as like tasks and reminders, okay? So if we go down here, I don't know if it's visible in this, this is just essentially an image, but you can decide mm -hmm. to associate this with companies, contacts or deals, yep. Yep. right? So we looked at a lot of that functionality um, that, that exists. Let me see if I can pull up the um, one second, Harry, let's see here. Um, contacts, where did it go? Uh, okay, here's the task one. So this is a part of this, this kind of upcoming update is this um, ability to create a task and then you can set up reminders. So you could say, hey, I wanna be reminded of this task and I'm going to assign this task. So you can see this task is assigned to me. And I want to be reminded of this task by text message three days from now at 8 a.m. or whenever. And then, so that's kind of like, I think, what you're looking for there. And then the last one is the contacts portion of this. Here is contacts. So this one is missing one piece right now. 
So you can have tasks that are associated with contacts, right? So every lead that comes into the system moving forward will automatically be created as a contact. You guys yep. don't have to use this system, but it is something that will be really useful. Yep. This right here on the right side is going to be a conversation stream of any type of conversation that's come through. So yes, let's say is. you've got, the first one is a text message. You see that? And then there's a yep. Facebook message that happened between you. So you set up a contact and you've got their name, all this information, and then we can kind of tie this to, so there's a phone call, right? You can play back the phone call. This is the form submission. And then you could send an, a text message, an email, or a Facebook message directly from this window and have everything in one spot where you can use this. So now we're kind of like blending these three different pieces right. all into right. one, where right. it's a deal, a pipeline, and a contact. So it obviously it's tied to, and it's related to the lead, but it's not using that progress field. I felt that it would be really limiting, Harry, if we built it with that field. So what we did is we rolled off a separate kind of system Makes that you can customize sense. as you need. Yeah. What's your terminology for this, uh, for these different um, events that occur in this timeline over here? What do you call those things? These things here? Yeah, those elements. Um, I don't really have a good terminology. For, I, I guess like um, conversation events, I, I haven't really, coin the term for it yet but now, um will, will they be customizable or let me say with they you know you have a you have a, a one called text message uh-huh will th will that thing itself be customizable different type i'm calling i'm going to call them activities just for this conversation with okay. you and me could can you have uh customizable activities I'm confused by um, like, how would you customize, let's say for text message, give me an example of how this text message would be customized. Um, oh boy, that's a big conversation. Let's say, um, it's not, not, not the message itself, but the, like you can't see my cursor moving around, but I'm pointing to the word text message to that phrase. So that's, that's, an, that's some sort of element that you've got created right or it's a code that you is it a drop down or did did someone write text message in there the no, no this is up? i see your confusion this is a history of what's happened yes so this is just pulling in this like if a text message occurred in the past then it's putting that text message into the history so it's not something it's no there's no like drop down option it's just like a timeline it's of pulling it out of the database happened. right okay i understand got it yeah so down here, you can respond by text message, by email. So, so like the next step that happens after this, after we have this in place is now we start putting an automation in automatic lead nurturing. So let's say when this form submission, if any of you guys have used Zapier, um, that's kind of the methodology we're going to be using for building a workflow where it's like, when this happens, if this is the case, then do this. So it could be like when a form submission comes in for this company then send a text message to the person that sent the form submission that says this. And it may be like, hey, this is Harry with like, um, you know, Harry's carpet cleaning. I just got your form submission on your site. I got my hands full right now. When's a good time to, to set up a time to check out your, your carpet or talk about your project? And that automatically goes out. So then let's say this person, Jeff, who is requesting this carpet cleaning, he gets a text message and then he responds. So what happens when he responds is that gets routed back to our system. And so our mobile applications for iPhone and Android are about ready to come out. So the user, your client can get a, a push notification and he can respond right through there. So what the goal is, is try to increase the conversion rate for yeah. our clients that exactly. are not good at this. But we had to have these foundational pieces in place before we could start to, to like build on top of build those. the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so this, we're sense. not ready for that lead nurturing portion yet, but we're almost ready for this piece. Right? right. So I'm looking at hopefully in the next week, two weeks of getting this out. Development's tricky. It's hard to predict. It's not like making a pizza where it's like, Oh, we got here. This is, we have to like work back where we, we, we didn't account for this piece now we got to like add that in and change yeah, this. Yeah, you I mean you almost got to take two steps, hang around, see what happens, and then yeah. figure out what to add next. Then take two more steps and repeat the process. That, you know? That's right. So you can't see it all ahead of that's time. That's right. Exactly. We are the 
guinea pig. My agency is the guinea pig for this yeah. stuff. So some of this stuff, like Jeff and I had a conversation earlier, some of these features, we're going to start testing in our agency. And then once we kind of have those like battle tested, then we push them over and, um, you know, then we push them over and in, in, into here. So really what I think though, like personally, I don't know, like if you look at what we're competing against, like if you were to go through and look at this and say like, okay, there's CRMs that exist like Salesforce yeah. and HubSpot and stuff like that, that have that CRM functionality. Yep. They don't have reputation management or there's ones out there that maybe have a heat map and GMB management, but they don't have the CRM functionality. So I don't know anyone that's kind of like blended all this stuff into one thing. And this is what I'm excited about for you guys. It's like, I know that you guys signed up and you're paying for this subscription or you bought the year. So what does it look like when we double or triple this functionality for you guys? And like, I know that a lot of you guys, well, hey, this sounds cool. Let's see how this plays out. But I think once you start using it and you get, can start to take advantage of like this, like automation and lead nurturing and this type of stuff, I think it's going to be a huge game changer for, for so many people in here, right? So um, having the text message and the reputation management, you know, having your clients be able to like convert more, that's a huge value add for them. Having well, it's like a value our, add for us too, because we make yep, more money then. That, that's you know? exactly right. That's I've exactly never, right. I have not seen a, a, I haven't seen, seen a single company that I've either tried to sell a lead gen or have sold a lead gen that was even doing it even doing it 50% right. And there's usually so much money being left on the table, it's not funny. I mean, they don't yeah, even know how to answer the telephone. Yeah, you know? I agree 100%, Harry. I have that, that issue all the time. Well, sure the do. thing is, what I like about what you're doing and why I keep uh, hounding you with all these tickets <laughs> is that I think lead generated can do, in, in part, some of that education because we can create things between what you're delivering as tools and what I can do in terms of manipulating the tool. I can deliver a system to some prospects that will let them learn how to use it and then they will make more money. But I won't have to yeah. go in and be the guy that consults with them. And I damn sure don't wanna be a trainer and be, be doing one-on-one work, one -on -one hourly work. There's no leverage in that. Right. But if I can do some of that, using the tools and and mold it to different clients which is what you have in mind that's perfect i mean it's beautiful i mean it could double my sales that that's 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 my plan and and, and also with that is like let's have like if the user role is defined as this then like we're, so one of the things we're going to be that i want to be releasing here and i'm hoping to have it out by the before the end of february is custom user roles we've got um i think it was mm -hmm. 75 or 80 different permissions so one of the permissions that I want to have in there is like, hey, show client training. So that way, if the user role is defined with that checkbox, when you guys set up a user, then this system can teach them how they can use it for themselves. And it needs to be, so that's yeah. a tricky thing to do because you don't want to show them training for things that they don't have permissions for. So we right. need to like take into account the permissions that you've assigned and only show them the training that would be associated with them so that this can be, but the goal is like, let's help our clients be more successful, right? Not only with like leads, but if we can, we can build a system that has a user interface and everything that builds in that follow-up for them, because we know that the contractors aren't, aren't good at that. And, and what if we have like professional invoicing in here for them? Right. What if they can send a text message to their clients that has a link where they can collect payment, right? So we connect this to a payment yep. processor for them and then they get done with the job and they like, hey, just click on this link and you can collect payment, right? Let's how, like, how many of these things can we stack up before it's, right. it's like a no brainer, not only for you guys, but for your clients. And that, that's like what Jeff and I do in our agency is like, I'm just going to make it expensive for you not to use our services because right. I'm going to give you so much incredible value right. that it's just like, it's going to cost you money not to use our services. Yeah. Maybe you're paying us $3,000 a month, but we're bringing you $60,000 a month in business. So don't pay like pay, not paying that $3,000 a month is going to cost you 
$57,000, yeah. right? That's, right. that's expensive, right? right. So right. that's kind of what I'm, I'm taking the exact same strategy here with you guys. And with this software is I'm just going to keep on dumping on as much value as I can until it's expensive for you guys not to use this system. And, you know, I think most of you think that maybe that's already the case, but I'll tell you with what we have planned, you guys haven't seen anything yet. I've got so much planned. I'm going to blow this thing out of the water with, with some of the stuff we have coming. I'm not going to mention a lot of the updates that we're working on because I think if it got out, I think other people, um, you know, at some point we're going to start showing up on the map for other people. Yeah. And I don't want them to know because I haven't seen this, haven't seen it available anywhere. So um, when that thing goes live, it's going to be like, I mean, we're probably four months away from that. But when, when I have this, this kind of like big plan for something, when that piece gets rolled out, um, I think it's going to really set, set, set us apart from a lot of people. So um, I, I'm not going to share that with anyone. Uh, Jeff already knows about it, but everybody else, we're keeping that kind of like under under our hat for a little while just, uh, just, a little, uh, just to ahead, add Jeff. a little uh, my internet i don't know if you guys can hear it i just to add a little yeah. nuance there like when i i'm building long-term relationships with our clients and so when i go in and i tell them about these bells and whistles that we offer i always make sure that i'm reminding them that we're not nickel and diming them for this extra stuff right like when you work with us like you have everything we got basically I mean, you can go in and parse it out and all that if you want, but I just think from a relationship standpoint, charge that money and then go and dump value in, and um, you know manage it like that. that I, at least that's that's been working well for us. Yeah, you you know, there's this there's this kind of like idea I have in my head about this is like if you have somebody like paying you the maximum amount that 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 they're gonna pay you, that's that's probably not it's probably not good. Like it, it may seem good, but this is the type that client's going to cycle through at some point, like they're, they're right on the threshold. That's that you probably want to dial it back just a little bit and have it be mailbox money. Somebody's right on the threshold and yeah. you don't send them as yeah. many leads as they expect one month. They're going to be on the phone with you. You're gonna, like, yeah, you're gonna you don't just, want a red line. Yeah. Yeah. So you dial that back and just like make it a no brainer and you just get mailbox money. You never like, we don't have to hear, we can go and, and focus our time on other things that is going to land us more clients, which is actually going to make us more money than like if we had everyone like redlined, right? So, a um, couple I, of I questions in the chat in the Facebook app, Patrick. Um, Charlene was saying, "Can I use the CRM to drop in a bunch of leads and follow what is going on in the pipeline?" I'm guessing you manually, but I don't. I'm not really clear on. I guess it depends on what you want to do with those leads once you dump them in there, whether it's going to be valuable or not to use it in that way um, that maybe you can add some verification on that. Yeah. I see her question there. Um, could you, could I use the CRM to drop in a bunch of leads and follow what is going on in the pipeline? I don't know what you mean by follow. Um, so right now you have the, we, even though we haven't loaded in the pipeline functionality that, that I just went over, you essentially can make your own pipeline right now, you can create custom fields. It's just not using that Kanban drag and drop board that um, wherever that is, this thing. So this is gonna be your like pipeline where you can drag and drop. So yeah. you can That's still- That's what I was thinking. If you, could, if you wanted to drop a lead in there and say, well, did they convert? What was oh, the, I see. What I see. So, so, I don't know if that's what she's asking, but I think that's. Yeah. So, so maybe what she's asking is like, and Shirlene, if you're on this call, it's too many people on the screen for me to be able to tell who all the people at once. But if you're on this call, you know, feel free to like turn your mic on so we so we can discuss it further. Uh, but we're going to have a, it's pretty similar. So a lot of you guys probably know how the, the things work for qualified the qualified calls filter. If you don't, let's talk about that real quick. And then I'm going to circle back to this because we're going to use a similar methodology. Okay, so, ooh, that's not good. Hang on one second. I don't know if that's happening for all of our stuff. Okay, so that must have been some weird scenario going on there. Okay, so if you go to edit company, you'll have um, this qualified calls filter option here. Okay, so... The way this works is as calls come into your agency, they're not automatically added as leads. They're held in the all calls area. It's kind of like quarantine. You don't want that to be the way it is. You can just turn this filter on 
And now every call that comes in will automatically be added. I know that we had a couple bugs that we worked out, so it should be working good. If anyone that's watching this was having an issue with like some calls not being added, we think we've solved that issue. Um, so, but basically what you can do is you can start to set criteria of how calls flow in. So I could say only add a call as a lead if it's like 90 seconds, the answer status is answered and maybe it's from this area of code, right? Then add it as a lead. So now let's circle back to the pipeline. So we're gonna create a similar filtering system where you could have leads be automatically added into a pipeline and have that pipeline be associated with a client that meets certain criteria. Okay, so maybe only add it as a lead if like, you know, it's from this company or this client or whatever, you know, if this service is like, if they've checked that they want like installation instead of repair, like let's add that into the pipeline, right? So we're gonna give you a similar type menu to this for the, the automation flow. And then there's always gonna be the manual one where you can just like manually create that. Your clients can manually create that, that lead flow. So Charlene, that's the best that I could um, answer based on the I information. I think that I nailed it. Uh, I, got a, I got a message in Facebook chat that thumbs up that that's what she was asking. Okay. Cool. Another question that might've slipped past, um, Laurent slash Esther is asking, is there a white labeling part of the roadmap? Yeah, yeah, there, there, there's absolutely a white label, especially with the reputation management. Um, that portion of it is, is um, near the top of the priority list for us is, uh, we realize that there's an issue with, with uh, selling, potentially selling reputation management the, with our prices being so cheap for reputation management, uh, someone could come in and, and potentially buy a package and then just do it themselves. So we're going to eliminate that as a possibility and have the white label. So that's going to be one of the first versions of it. Um, with the mobile apps, we're looking at ways that you guys can um, um, kind of have the, the functionality be white labeled for that. As far as like a full blown system, um, it is something that I've thought about quite a bit and I don't know 100% how to set that up yet. So. Um, there's absolutely pieces that we're going to be adding in there um, for for that you know kind of moving moving forward that will be white labeled. Okay, cool. Um, Jeff, am I all caught up on the questions? Yep. I okay. have a question. Is that generic? Yes, it is, but I'm not showing my face because I I'm not camera ready. Well, I don't know that you exist in a non-camera ready fashion. Oh. <laughs> oh man, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I've been super busy. Oh, I'm uh, so busy. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I haven't been on these calls, so I definitely wanted to hop on and see what's popping. Um, I had a question, and you might have answered this. I know I've asked this before, and other people have. Are we still sticking only to call sling? So. Um, my ability to add in phone systems is, um, even though, even though I'm the owner of this, I have an agreement with Dan for lead generated to kind of not have products that compete against his. So, um, we're still kind of like trying to work out some of those details. And at sometimes it seems as if it's a moving target. So, okay. um, if we get that approval, I think we're pretty much ready to go with that. It's just kind of like, um, getting all that stuff sorted out, sorted out with him to make sure that it um, gels with him correctly. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, cause I, I, I primarily use CallRail, so. I don't know if, um, I think it cut out and we're not allowed, that's a bad word on this. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. So no, yeah. Call, call is the only, the only phone system that, that I've heard of for, for call tracking. So I'm, I'm not familiar with any of those other ones, but. Gotcha. Um, Okay, cool. Uh, any other questions? No, sorry for the bad word. No, you're good. You're good. It's, um, it's not the, it's, it, it happens quite a bit. You know, I'm doing everything I can to give you guys the best product that, that we can. And, um, you know, sometimes there's some limitations with um, some of the agreements that we originally set up. So I'm, you know, I'm going to make sure that I, that I stick to um, all my agreements 100%. So hopefully, um, you know, you could or could not approach Dan and be like, hey, is, is I don't know, you know, um, what, are, what are their options here, right? So 
Okay. Um, that would be the best way to handle it. Maybe I don't know. Um, it's it's up to you guys. All right. So cool. Any other? Am I caught up? Any other questions, Miss Janeri? Oh no, that's it. I'm listening and stuff. So and working at the same time. So that was my only. Okay. <laughs> right on. All right. So I think we're caught up. One of the things hey, that I want. I had one more question. Oh yeah, Esther. How can I help? Hey. Thanks. Um, so I just noticed the notification for calls. I don't know how new that is. Um, and I, that's something I was looking forward to because I didn't want to keep sending calls from what do you want? It's not um, through Costling. So I'm actually wondering if you see how it says there's one for lead arrived. Is that for forms only, or is that for any any lead? So if if my call is qualified as a lead, does that fall under that category? Um, you know, that seems like something that I should know 100%. Um, so to start off with, this update is probably um, nine hours old. So oh, cool. Okay. You just launched it this morning. Um, and I don't 100% know. I think that this is going to work for, for phone calls and forms, and this is going to work for just phone calls. So this will work for, for any lead, um, and this will work for any call. But like, uh, so this is a new feature and maybe what we need to do is we need to add in a third one for form submissions. And this could be for any lead, this could be for any call and then any form submission. And that would give you the most control of how you could manage those notifications. But as of this morning, you now have the ability to get this in-app or email notification. Yeah, I think really uh, what I'm thinking is Currently, I have a few lines that get a lot of robocalls, and in calling, there's no way to not get a notification for those. So when I'm when, when I'm forwarding um, email notifications to a client, they get them as well. So this would be a really good workaround if I qualify it first, which I've done with all my with all my um, numbers. It has to be at least like two seconds long, so I know it's connected. And then I mean, because I have IVR set up, um, and then. And then that way, send the notification afterwards, after it's qualified as a lead. Yeah. So it's still um, forwards, sorry, it's still forwards, Esther, if, it, if they don't do the IBR? Yeah. It's wow. still, yeah. Okay. So I see, I kind of understand the use case here. And um, I don't think this is the best way to handle what you're trying to accomplish. And, and you know, maybe that's a pretty common request because I know that a lot of people were asking and having issues with the, the, the um, notification for call sling. So the way it sounds like a better way to handle this would be to have it kind of like to alter the, the uh, qualified calls area and have, let me just pop over to one of those real quick. Um, okay, is that company? Hang, hang on one second. Let's try this company. Okay, maybe it's just when you go through that screen. That's weird because we have some kind of error there now. Um, let me go through this way because we didn't have an issue with this. So this is the same. Well, oh, okay. Is anybody having this issue when they try to view a company where it crashes like this? Maybe it's just for some of my companies. No, I've seen that trying to create a, a integration key, but it actually creates the key. So if you keep doing it, it'll just keep creating the key. Okay, uh, Lauren, I see that. Um, I, Lauren, I see that you you're having a crashing issue. Can, would you mind, Lauren? Is that um, it, first of all, is that how I pronounce your name? Is that right, Lor Lauren? I'll ask you to unmute. Um, oh yes. Hey. Hey, how's Hi. it going, man? I'm good, and you? Good, yeah. So yeah, it's it's Lawrence, you can say it, yeah. Lawrence, okay. is that French? It is, it is. Yeah. You can hear it with my accent. Mm. Uh, maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're having crashing issues. Is it crashing when you go to a company? Um, so yes, I did that earlier and it was crashing. Um, so I can do it again. 
Yep. Can you create a ticket and specify the company that it crashes for so that we can, because wh what happens a lot of times is there's like, every company can have different scenarios. So it, it's not, obviously it's not crashing for every scenario. It's only crashing for some of those and, and letting us know the company can help us identify what the scenarios are that create that. So, um, but I don't, I don't want to get sidetracked. I just wanted to make sure that I captured that because like for, for me, crashes are like red alerts. When something crashes, I'm like, well, what, let's fix this instantly, right? So, uh, but back to uh, Esther's question with the um, qualified call filters. So really it seems like what you want is you want the notification to happen when there is a qualified call filter. Like you wanna combine this where you say like, hey, send the client a notification that the phone call came from us if it's a first time caller and it's 30 seconds long or something like something like that. Am I right in assuming that, yes. Esther? Yes. So these notifications up here, they're kind of more intended. Um, okay, that didn't work. Um, so those notifications up here are kind of more intended for, for you, which like we can create our clients as users and set up those notifications for them. But it's all it says is like, hey, this event happened. Whereas it sounds like what you would prefer is that they get notified that a call came from you, right? That you get credit for the lead that you sent them, but you don't want it to be for the robocallers or this other stuff. Is, am, am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, and it's not even so much the credit, it's the um, notification in real time. So um, if they missed it, they can call back. And if- um, I see. Yeah, instead of it, basically, instead of it coming from cost and coming from lead generated. Yeah, okay. Um, I think with what we have here, you, like here's what, here's what you do as a workaround is like, um, first, I think it would be great if you could create a ticket that asked that just so, or I don't know, or, or like maybe Jeff could take a note or somebody, but let's um, find out is every lead that a right phone call and form submissions. We need to know the answer to that because this could already be solving that. You could use the qualified call filters and then have like a new lead send out that notification, whether it's a phone call or not. And that would tell it, that would tell them because that part of the system is set up that way to forward those leads and send it to the client with the information. Right, right. That's why I was thinking, just have it, have them get the notifications all from the same system. Um, but so these notifications are only in the admin account, not in the users. Actually, no, no I, that doesn't really matter because I, the same way I automatically forward forms, I could automatically forward, forward calls now, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying is, is if this one is for both calls and leads or calls and forms, then you could automatically have that be sent to them for that. If it's only for the form submissions, and it's not doing it for the calls that are moved over from the qualified call section, then that won't serve that purpose. The notifications are for any type of user, not just for admins. So right. you can set up the, this is like as a workaround, you could set it up so that they get a notification for every call. Yeah. Okay. And I guess, I don't, I just realized um, it's important to get, um, they get the, recording for a voicemail. I don't know if that would include it. Hmm. Cause so far the, the links to recordings haven't been included. Yeah, let me just- um, That got resolved today, didn't it Patrick? What's that? The call recordings, didn't they get- She didn't wants they... the recording to be forwarded to her client, right? Oh, right. right. Yeah, so that's really, asking... I think like, yeah. And that's really the big, the advantage of, it's why I send them automatic emails so that they can listen to the, to the voicemail right okay. away. Mm -hmm. um, let me just take a little note here for one second, because I want to make sure, I think that what you're requesting is a really good feature. And I also think it's really minimal effort on our end to make it happen because we have pretty much everything in place we need. We just need to make a couple small changes. Our qualified. Just, just bear with me one second, guys. I want to make sure I don't forget this. Does anybody else have any other questions? There's a couple of things in the chat, Patrick. The first one, Phil was asking if we can add in Dollar Call Club. That's defunct as far as I know. It has not been resurrected. 
I think what he's asking is, is the service that Dollar Call Club provides. Oh, uh, was that? Is that is that right, Phil? He typed it in. So yes, it was. Um, that is a bee's nest that I don't want to mess with right now. I tried to, <laughs> uh, I tried to have that be a part of my business where I charge my clients extra and have the people answer the phone and it was just mm -hmm. like it was a nightmare and that's and oh. you know um i'm friends with gary who owned and ran dollar claw club and it was just a a really tough business model to work with and i would advise you guys when you onboard new clients to hopefully choose clients that are good at answering the phone which may not always be possible but resist this temptation to be the person that answers the calls for them and help them out because they're not good on the phone or whatever, because that's not scalable. And what's going to like, that's the biggest problem with it is, is it, the scalability is tough on it. When you start to get a lot of different um, clients stacking up and you have to know the dynamics of this client offers, like, let's say they're all in the same niche and like this client has this price and offers this, but not this. And you're expecting people to have that memorized in real time and handle this in an industry where they don't really know. It's just like, it's going to hurt the conversion rate. A lot of it, there's like scheduling conflicts that are going to happen. Like they can't schedule an appointment. So now there has to be like two touch points, right? So they make their initial call and then you take in their information, you pass it to them and then like they got to call them back. Right. Yeah. So I think it's definitely a, it's definitely a challenge that should be is best left with the business owner to resolve. In, in their own way because they might have you know a family member who's out of work and will answer the phone or maybe they want to you know whatever something but not us <laughs> anything but us please yeah um it, it, that's that's my first level of um prospecting is i assemble a list however i have it of the, of the you know say the concrete contractors i want to go after and the first thing i do is have either me or my va call them and if they don't answer the phone or right. if they answer it poorly, they do not get contacted. That's right. Because they're, yeah. you, you can't solve that problem for them. Yeah. It's just, it's not, it's not. Even if, even if they do answer the phone, Harry, I'm, and I'm sure everybody on this call has had this experience where they might answer the phone once, but they don't answer the next time or they answer it and they're on the run. They got concrete in their hands or wh whatever the case is. There's, there's exactly. always going to be all these scenarios that pop up where, they may be excellent one minute and horrible the next. You That's know? right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Or, or they, you know, yeah, we don't need to go into that. Um, so then Brendan was asking in the Facebook chat if there, there's any update on the exit data issue. Yes. Um, we've kind of put it on pause. I've heard mixed rumors that. Um, Facebook has like started to remove some of the, the data from the photos and I haven't tested it. And then, you know, we've kind of had some, some like pivots that we've had to make, but it, it is still on our agenda. Um, it is partially completed. So I don't have a, a, a like definite good timeline answer on, um, on, on when that, when that will uh, be live, but um, it, it's, I, I just want to make sure that, that it's going to be valuable to you guys before we take the time to build it out, right? And make sure that I've heard that Google's started scraping that they're like discarding the metadata when you load it. And I just want to confirm that that's not the case because, um, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if it is or not. But um, yeah, so still on our agenda, just and, and don't have a timeline for it. But uh, pending, it's still a valuable thing. We will absolutely do it. It's, and it's not that much extra to add. And then finally, Matthew's asking if there are any, any updates to call sling coming to call sling that I would know. I don't know if he is asking if there are any improvements to how call sling is integrated into lead generated, if that's potentially part of the question. Um, improvements in call sling itself. So I'm not part of that development team. Um, I don't know, you know, I've heard there's updates for it, but heard that a few years ago and I don't know what's changed. I think that, that, you know, maybe they did a little reface of it. Um, I wish I had a better answer for you, uh, Matthew. I, I just, I don't know. I'm, it, you know, if it, if it were my product, I would do some updates on it, but I, I don't have that control of it. 
a question if you're if free. Patrick? Yeah, Mark. Um, regarding um, course link type products, I believe there's a major problem with getting and using it in Australia. Um, Gary's on the line, so he'd be able to come on and talk about it better than me. But there is a, an option here we can use. Um, but I understand that it, that um, because Corsling isn't available, then perhaps you could look at it um, better for us. If we could get in so we could start using some of these features, that'd be absolutely fabulous. Um, Gary, I wonder if you could comment on it, please. Uh, yeah, mate, uh, Corsling is available for us here. Um, um, there is a, a very large, I guess, differential in pricing between uh, our local service and, and Corslink. Um, that's why um, I think the majority of Aussies uh, are going with the local. Um, for us, the difference is, uh, it, I think it's $2 a month um, compared to with the conversion, approximately $20 a month. Um, so I can understand why at scale people are, um, are going with the, the cheaper option. Um, but uh, of course, uh, uh, we in this group know nothing about that officially, I guess. That's uh, right. Uh, um, but yeah, the, there's, um, I, I think something Patrick mentioned a while ago was that um, there may be the possibility of Zapier um, connecting to um, some other services. And I, I, I am not uh, in a situation to be able to comment on that, but uh, Patrick might be able to, to shed some light, Pat. Um, I'm sorry, I, I got distracted there for a second. I was reading questions. Um, so uh, can you repeat that, the last part of that question there? Yeah, um, mate, um, uh, I remember you mentioning at one stage that um, that um, for people out of the US that maybe Zapier could be a... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that was actually, that was weird because I was reading a question. Uh, uh, Esther just asked a question about Zapier and I was like, got confused where I heard it. So, um, yeah, so I think Zapier could be an option for a lot of people um, to be able to have things just kind of like automated automatically pull stuff in. So Zapier can add a lead um, with our with our Zapier connection. You can absolutely add a lead into it. Um, we're looking at um, with like the ability to import as well. So um, having be able to import a bunch of leads, right? So that could be something that it's, it's not automated, but, but maybe you could put some automation in there depending on um, what the original phone provider offers on their end. So, um, so yeah, Zapier, Zapier is certainly an option. I, I think that some people have used that in, um, in other ones. And then uh, it looks like uh, Dave, Dave Lafferty says, I use Zer. I, I don't know what that is. Is that, is it, Dave, is that a, uh, is that like a Zapier alternative? Um, so I, 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 I it's a zapper, he says, uh, or, okay, cool. Uh, so I think there's a lot of alternatives to Zapier that are out there um, that, that I've heard of. So um, so integrating with CallRail through Zaps, uh, like I said, that's something you'll have to explore on your own. I'm not gonna directly try to support CallRail um, just because I feel like that is a violation of my agreement with with uh, with Dan. So, um, but you may want to explore that on, on, on your own and, and look at those possibilities. I'm not familiar with uh, what Zapier offers in relationship to CallRail. I do know that we offer a way for Zapier to add leads into our system, right? So that that is an option. So that part of it is there. Did you see that question in the Facebook chat, Patrick, from David Oswalt? It's kind of a, it's kind of a long one. It's kind of up your alley. I'm gonna check that real quick. Um, what would be the reason the heat map result would show that a GMB is ranking, but then a local incognito Google search doesn't show, doesn't even have the company showing in the GMB results list. Company site is showing for name, search term, and organic rankings, however. 
Okay, so let me just pull up a heat map and let's go over a few things. So, um, give me one second here. Okay, that is probably not a good example. Let me flip to a different one. Let's check out this company. Okay, let's look at this one. This is a great example of this. So, what if you do your search and let me get the phrasing of this right. So um, the Google search doesn't even have the company showing in the GMB result. Okay, so let's say that you're located over here in this part of town, right? And you do your search here and you're a 20. So where you are in your location, it's not showing, but it is showing in other parts of town, right? Also an incognito is great because it's going to get rid of your cache history and it's not gonna take it, like it's not gonna take into account the searches that you've done on Google while you're logged into your account. However, um, Google is more than capable of determining, determining your IP address and associating searches with your IP address. So regardless of whether you're in an incognito browser or not, it knows that you've, that like someone on that IP address has done a search. So like, you don't have a completely clean history just because you've gone into incognito mode, right? And as we see in searches like this, if you're any one of these spots outside of this, then you're not showing up, but over here you are. And I mean, this can play out a lot of different ways. So that could be one reason that that's happening. Would it, um, would it not be showing up altogether or would it show up down the list? I mean, I mean, not, when I say it's not showing up on those GM, GMB results, you know, sometimes you have one page of results, maybe you might have 12 pages of results. Yeah. It's not showing up for that keyword at all, at all. Not on first page, second page, whatever. I think there's actually only about one page. Maybe it bleeds into page two, just a small bit, but I'm, I mean, it's not even on the list. Right. Not so at all, but it is showing up for the same search term in organic ranking. So I know that like it's tracking that ranking. Okay. That so you're, you're really asking like, why is this, why is it showing up in the organic area, but not in the, the, the map area, right? Well that, but also like if I do a heat map tool for that particular GMB, it does show, you know, the ones closer to its location, it does show that it would, you know, be in a colored result but it's not, it sounds like from like a map perspective google doesn't think that that your property is very strong and it's going to have kind of like these inconsistent results of when like it's like maybe it doesn't 100 percent agree that this search term is related to how it views it so you would think that like it would just tack it on to the end right like if if it's a poor ranking one but what happens when it doesn't do that it's like Google is just doesn't, doesn't even think you're relevant to, to this searcher. And, you know, um, it, it's hard to speculate exactly on that. What our tool does essentially is it goes out and it performs the Google searches and it moves the longitude and latitude to those points. And then it scrapes the results and then puts them into this grid and shows you the measurement, right? So we can sit back here and try to speculate on like why, why Google decided not to show us in these different spots, right? But um, it's not, I don't think it's so much a question of the heat map tool as this is a question of like, why is Google treating it this way, right? So, um, and, and I don't 100% know, I think as you level this stuff up, like how strong is the site that's, that's associated with it, David? It, like you say, it's in the organic rankings. Is it number one? It's number six. Site? It's number, number six. six on page one for that term so i mean you, it's just i don't know do you mind just, do you mind sharing with the group what the site is or do you want to kind of keep that under wrap no i don't i don't really care um it's a um it's the site is bigredmetals.com we've talked about this site before i remember that name yeah because we had a couple of incomplete um gmb heat maps like three or four months ago that we just had to like recreate that got stalled out in, in the mill in the build. That's why we talked about it before. Yeah. Um, give me one second here. I'm just gonna pull up Ahrefs. Okay. 
I know that not all you guys have access to Ahrefs, but it's it is good for you kind of like letting us see where we are. Okay, so you I can see. Didn't build the site, by the way, so what's that? I didn't build the site, so it's not it's not it's not as strong as I would like it to be. But I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, it looks like you've got some tr some traffic here. You're ranking for things organically. Otherwise, this would be zero. Um, obviously, you're like. Your, your backlink profile is kind of hurting. Like Ahrefs doesn't think that you have any very many strong links associated with your domain. Um, so let's go and look at what we have coming in here. Um, it looks like your best links are coming from yellow pages. So really, when you're going into a market, when I'm going into a market, and this touches on something I wanted to cover today was like due diligence. When I'm going into a market and I see that the top links are coming from like yellow pages, my first thought is that this is going to be a weaker competitor because I can like, yeah, 90 might be good, but this is the actual kind, this is kind of the juice that's being passed on to you. So it, this is kind of like if yellow pages is a 90, but they've got like a hundred thousand backlinks going out to other sites the value of a link from yellow pages goes down dramatically. And this second number kind of takes that into account a little bit more, okay? So this is not a strong number for here. Really, I would love to see that at like 30 plus with your, so it's gonna sort this by this number, right? By the UR. So your top one is a 14 and yellow page is a directory that anyone can get a link from and it's not related to, what does big red metals do? You guys, they manufacture metal or what, like, what is that exactly? Yeah, they, they are a metal fabricator and they design metal buildings and okay. metal barns and all that kind of jazz. Okay. Yeah, so it would be great if you could get like some industry specific or at least something related to manufacturing or something like that as a link. So this is going to, the reason that I'm talking about this relative, to, this is going to contribute to like how Google really values your, your site, right? This is going to affect your GMB because your GMB is connected to your website and they're looking at their, your site and they're seeing that like, hey, this is 0.4. But what's good, is this an old, is this an older domain? You don't know, huh? I don't know. I mean, it's been around, it probably hasn't been around more than five years, if I had to guess. Okay. Um, all right. So you've got this like metal buildings. Dothan, is that, is that Alabama? Is that what, is that what that is? Yeah, Dothan, Alabama. Dothan. Dothan. Are these the terms that you're trying to go out? Like when you, when you do your heat map search and you don't have it ranking um, for, or it's like not showing up a part of town, is it for terms like this or yep. is it, yep. is, what, term, what term is that that it's not doing that for? Metal buildings, Dothan, Alabama. So this, this exact term right here? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so it's clear. I mean, you're the fourth ranking person for that term organically. So it's clear that there, there is that relationship between there. I'd like to see it in action. I'm just going to, um, hopefully this is valuable to other people because um, let's see here. And unfortunately, I don't have access to the site build, but I have access to the GMB management. So. I've, I've weaseled my way in a little bit, but not all the way. <laughs> so so they, don't, they don't let you um, have access to the actual website, huh? No, he's got, he's got another crew. Someone else built that original site, and it's supposed to be being redone by uh, someone who is in the agricultural, like, yeah. industry, like a big, one of the big ag magazine companies or something partners with and does advertising and he wants them to do it because he thinks they're going to be uh, more, they know all his clientele and that kind of thing. Really, really that like, it, I mean, it sucks that that's their viewpoint. And if you can figure out a way to change that viewpoint, I think that he'll thank you for it later on. But looking at this, this is, this is pretty awful. Um, I this, would ask him to try to get them on the phone a couple of times with a, a couple of small issues and see how that goes over for him. Yeah. It's a good call. Uh, he actually told me he was going to include me on one of their um, cons consultation calls because I told him 
hey, if they're redoing this site, I don't have to have, I don't have to do it. But if they're going to do it, they need to do this, this, and this. Right. Because it's going to yeah. help you. And he goes, cool. Hey, I want you to be on this call with us whenever it gets to that point. And I'm like, all right, great. So it just hasn't gotten there. David, how long have you been, uh, how long have you been in the group and doing this stuff for? Five years. Okay. Um, Too long. Yeah. Well, I'm, it is what it is. We've all got our own life stuff going on too here. You know, I mean, there's, there, there's people in that, there's plenty of people that, that have been in for seven years that, um, you know, people like they've had their own life happen and, you know, maybe they're not where they want to be. It's just like, Never everybody's got their own pace. Um, if you feel like it would be, I don't want to, I, I like hesitate to, to offer this, but like, I would love to get on that call with you and just appear as a part of your agency and be like, dude, this is the problem. Like, cause I'm looking at this thing and this is just like, they're not going to get what they need with this site. Look, I mean, look at the metadata here, short codes. Is that what we want to rank for services, HTML styles? This page shouldn't even be showing metal roofing. Like this stuff is so far from optimized. It's going to create, like, it's going to make you look bad because you're not going to be able to perform with a website like this. Look how many words are on this whole page. Probably 300, maybe yeah, not, many. not many. Yeah, it's in, like this is like they probably have one, two, three, four. Uh, they, they had 68 pages listed there um, on their, you go back on their index. But I mean, not these, a lot of these pages don't look like they're real pages. Let's see, here. you wanted, you wanted to take these guys on as SEO client or as a Legion client? This is an SEO oh. client for him. That's Laura Mipsum that they have on this page. I this would just I would sell their own site and outrank them and smoke them and then come in and sell them the leads for a double the price. The, pro the problem with well, that idea for this client is there's such a like, uh, what, there's probably what, not a ton of people that are, they probably don't have a lot of competition, right? Like, there, there's, a, there's a fair amount of com competition in town. And what kind of piqued his interest because he, he knows that I like pitched him on some of this stuff before. And I had done a little bit of content marketing for him, just like putting some articles out. And I said, hey, let me just do this. It's going to help at least, you know, put some information out there because you guys don't have it on your site. So let's get some articles written about your site, linking to your site about what you do. And so hopefully that'll help since I can't have the site. And so I've started doing a little bit of that. But basically he re it really piqued his interest. And I said, we need to kind of fix some of the things in the GMB because it wasn't even showing up at all. And um, I said, let me have access to it because another lead generator popped in and put a, a Dothan Metal Buildings GMB and didn't have a site, wasn't, you know, it was just a lead generator, dropped a pin downtown, got an address and started ranking like third in the maps with no reviews and anything. And he was like, who is wow. this? Yeah, and he was, and, he, and it kind of pissed him off because he was like, how is this, how is this happening? I was like, well, it's kind of what we do. <laughs> so, yeah. you know. do, you, do you have some, some like case studies? Here's the issue you have is he doesn't trust you. That, that, to be honest, that's, that's the problem you have. He doesn't believe in you. And that may be that you haven't done a good enough job earning that, or maybe he's had bad experience, whatever it is, the, the end result is he does not trust you. And I'll tell you from where I was when I started this, I had those conversations and now I never have those. Everyone's like, this is where I want to go. What do you need from me? Let, let's go. Right. Like, so that's, that's a part of the sales process and you need to build that trust because he needs to be looking at you as the expert. And part of it might be that he has his own like internal marketing company and now he's got, like paying them and you have to fire them and like whatever that like, nonsense that he has to process through his head but the end result is he does not believe in your ability to to do this do you have case studies from the past that can demonstrate like hey here's what we did over here here's the phone calls for this here's the traffic here's the like heat map like so if you can blast him with that you may be able to move that needle to where he trusts you yeah not industry specific but other a few other industries i do yeah, I, that, I don't think it matters if it's industry specific. What matters is that you're able to demonstrate your skill set and this ability to like 
move him in the direction that, that we need him to go, right? So it looks like uh, one of the things that we're gonna be doing here with this heat map is we're looking, we, we kind of started off the what's available in the queue for the heat maps kind of low because it, it's such an intensive process on our server. So we were talking this morning about raising that so that we can do a lot more, which means the queue will go faster. We just didn't want everybody's thing. To, it has the potential to make things run slow for everyone if it's all getting sucked in by the heat map. But David, do you have um, like a share link since you've already run this? And, and like, I hope when you run this, you move it because it looks like your GMB is actually located. Like if we pull this out here, um, it looked like your GMB is kind of maybe down here somewhere, like in the Southwest area. So when you run this, you, you should probably be targeting the heart of, of Dothan. Yeah. I can grab a share link, hang on. Yeah, because it seems like it's just taking a minute. I wish I, I wish I had a, you, you would think the person who owns the software could just make this thing go whenever he wants, but I wait in line like you guys do. So um, I don't know what your guys' experience has been like. Do you guys find like, do you guys feel like, um, it seems like we have to wait and I wish this thing would launch faster or is it like, well, you know, usually it goes pretty quick, but sometimes I have to wait. I'd, I'd love to hear that feedback from you guys. If you, Throw it into the chat and let me know uh, what your what your experience has been like that because we haven't had we haven't had people complain about it but if if you know if if that was something that was on the wish list usually it's very quick. One for more question um, that I about heat maps I don't want to get lost in the mix here. It's the where would they find the best videos on how to rank in the in the grids the specific grid locations. On the heat map, with all with the changes in the new group, like where would where would that video be? Yeah, um, so it, it's not in the lead generated group, but but I'm basically have all the, the videos that I've done on this subject, and I'm going to be uploading. We just started this group a couple of days ago, so I'm going to be uploading those in there, um, so that it's it's kind of like a library for you guys on on how to rank that stuff. Um, that was for Dawn. What's that? That was for Dawn. I'm just, oh, okay. Just, just, oh, I see. Yeah, Don. Um, yeah, just signed up for lead generated. Awesome, yeah. Don. Welcome, man. I hope I hope you like it. Um, we've got a lot of tutorial videos, as you hopefully saw, that show you how to use the software. Um, what your question is is really not about how to use the software. It's it's how to like um, how to rank something, right? Which is more like a Legion SEO. Which obviously, I'm on this call. We're providing those types of answers, but with the the video stuff is like the walkthrough of that is, is, is very geared towards, um, hey, here's how the different tools in it work. Um, in this group, we'll be focused more on this type of question though. And, and I'm gonna grab all the videos that I've done on this subject and load them into this group. So they're kind of all organized in there. Okay, cool. I see your link here, um, yeah. David. So let's launch this thing up. Okay, cool. So you've kind of targeted the, the South part of it. And I see that you're, it doesn't look like you're ranking anywhere for metal buildings Dothan. Yeah, the one, I did another one that it ranked um, and it was a different key term. So it was actually, uh, it was actually just metal buildings. So I can pop that one up. Hang on. Just here's here's what here's what I would do, man. If I were you, if I were in your shoes, I've got a, I've got like a plan of attack. First is you've got like the, this uh, the okay. So we need a lot more pictures, and you can probably get get rid of this picture of the screws because that's like that's not really anything, right? So um, it's great that you've got these ones in here of the team. I'm getting some feedback. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna mute you, uh, David. I don't know if that's coming from you. Um, okay, so um, load this thing up with tons of photos. You could dr drive around. Um, David, do you actually live in Dothan? Yeah, I see you, okay. So drive around town with your GPS on your phone turned on and hit that location that shows you where you are and just take pictures of metal buildings all over town, right? That's what I would do. I would just be like, hey, I'm gonna picture of the building from here up close and, and just like surround all the areas that you wanna rank in. And Google 
will not, you'll not, everything will be geotagged and none of them are going to be stock photos, right? So that would be one thing. I would, I would load this thing up. I would get like 50 pictures on, on this GMB. If you can get some more of the company and, and stuff like that, I think that's great. Um, these photos, when you name them and you're out. So this, this kind of answers your question too, Don. Um, what do you do to rank rank in this this area or where the video, this is what I would do to rank in this area. I would get those photos in there and the names that I'm going to be using are going to be like the neighborhoods. So it's going to be like metal buildings, Dothan, Dothan metal buildings, metal buildings. And then I'm going to maybe zoom out one level in like Wicksburg, Slocon, whatever these names are of these neighborhoods, I'm going to be hitting these different areas. Like so when I'm in, like you've taken the picture in Newville of a metal, metal building, then you're like metal building, like and mix it up. Maybe throw a big red in there a couple times to make it seem a little bit more organic. So that would be part of what I would do. You need to get these guys to like, they, they need a lot more content on their site and they need to like, here's what I would do too, is I would like, I'm hesitant, I'm gonna tell you how I would rank the site if I were in your shoes, but I don't know that like, you may have a bigger issue with the way you're like structuring things where it's an SEO client and, and it's like, I, I don't know that I would spend a ton of time on an SEO client I, personally, but that's a separate thing. If I was gonna, if, if this were my site and I were trying to rank it, maybe I own big red buildings, you've got to get all these pointless pages de-indexed. That's just like, a lead weight on, on your foot. And then you've got like, whoever's in charge of this, like they clearly don't know what they're doing because they have hello world. Like this is not what we want to rank for. There's an association there, right? You've got like a layer slider. So this is, they, they've allowed things on the, the website to be indexed that weren't supposed to be indexed. And then for the pages that they do want indexed, they're terrible. The, the, this like metadata services, is that what you want to rank for? So put in here what you want to rank for and put in here what's going to get clicked on, right? So like maybe maybe this is like we, um, uh, you know, how many years they've been in business? Maybe they've been in business 30 years. So what could be on there, you want to kind of blend what you want to rank for and click through rate. So Google is actually considering cl click through rate as a ranking factor. So put something in there that looks like if you put something in parentheses, that typically grabs people's attention. If you put a year in there, like 25 years in business in parentheses, um, metal building installation, Del Dothan, right? So like some kind of combination of, of those type of things. And you, you would wanna sit down and there's some really good sites out there like um, SERP preview. So if you do something like this, um, I don't know where the one, I don't think this is the one I usually use. But you can, you can put in the meta title and see what it looks like and try to build something that's going to be really attractive. you got to get that click-through rate up and you've got to optimize it in a way that goes after the keywords. Because whoever did this doesn't have any clue what they're, this is like SEO 101, right? They should like, these meta things need to be dialed in. No one's going to click on, like how exciting is it to click on, like what is the short codes? I'm going to go to this page. This is nonsense. I'm bouncing, right? I'm out of here. Now your bounce rate's hurting and like, it's just, it's destroying the site essentially. That's the message that needs to be delivered to the owner. And don't be afraid. Like, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be afraid to be not be, I, I would say it in that tone, like almost like maybe not with like, this person doesn't know what they're doing. Leave that part out. But it's just like, this is what's really hurting your site is this, let them come to that assumption on their own because it sounds like these people may be employees that are like, you know, you don't want to, destroy there. Okay. Um, you, you, Dave Lafferty, you see him. So those of you guys who don't know Dave, um, oh, look, so Jeff says a 360 photo in there as well. So those of you guys don't know Dave, he's been in the group for a long time, somebody that really knows what he's doing. So, um, you know, you could be building out pages that, that cover all of these, um, all of these, these things that he's listed off to like dive down at, like the competition for terms like this, that Dave's listing, like commercial metal buildings, retail metal buildings, like you don't want to go crazy where you're like spamming it, but you want to, uh, 
like you, you want to make sure that like hey these like I, maybe you have an applications page where like and then on the applications page you talk about all the different ones and that that could go to like hey there, these are some of the churches that we've done and like then you've got like photos and you're like talking about the actual project rather than making it seem like super spammy right uh, can i make just a couple of quick comments on it yeah absolutely yeah um so just going back to the photos um don't don't be afraid guys to throw as patrick said to throw a lot of photos um, on those GMBs. Um, there is a limit to the amount of photos that a GMB will accept, but it's 2,000. So by, by Google setting that parameter so high, um, they really are expecting you to dump a bunch of photos on there. So don't hesitate to throw them up. Um, on, on the um, data side of it, um, there's, there is some conjecture <clears throat> about that data sticking. Um, the, the reality of it is, is that the data is stripped from the GM, from the photos um, when you download them back out of the GMB. Now, what, what is not known very well um, is whether or not Google is paying attention to that data as it comes in. So um, even if someone tells you, don't worry about putting your metadata on because Google strips it out, keep putting it in because we don't know whether or not they're paying attention to it as it comes in. So that's that's a critical thing. That, that doesn't matter who tells you that, don't always put your, the, the, the data in there. Um, and, and David, just from a viewpoint of, um, of that client, um, I would probably start to maybe give them a little bit of a hint of FOMO, like, there are these, these things are such an important part of this project for you that, that because I, I, I only want to be successful with the jobs that I do, there are some things in here that would prevent me from being th that successful um, provider for you. So you don't have to say to them, I'm not going to do it if you don't get these things done. But if you back that down a little bit and give them that hint of, Shit! If he's if he's jeopardising this program because of the stuff that other people have done, perhaps that will uh, elevate you um, to a point where you you may have a little bit more of a trust factor going on there. Um, I hope that those things help guys a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I think you. I think exactly what what Gary said, and, and I would be leveraging this heat map too, and and, and letting know like. Hey, this is how you're ranking all across town. And this is a result of the people that have like all the stuff that you've done on this site. This is a result of that. I've done other sites. Here's our results in these other sites. Let's take a look at who, who's winning in this market. Um, maybe you've heard of, um, let's see who, store all custom buildings is absolutely, their average is a one. So they're, they're number one in every single spot on this map, right? What does that look like? This is probably costing with, with your guys' ticket price. This is where the FOMO that Gary's bringing in comes in too. It's like this, this, the absence from ranking and this number one spot is costing you probably millions of dollars a year. So yeah. you, you're free to continue on doing this using the same people you've used. But based on my expert opinion and the successful projects that I've had, I think these are some major problems that exist for your site. And if these are not fixed, there's no chance in us obtaining a ranking like this. Okay. And look, what we do, my time is valuable, right? I've got people that are lined up for our services and I really like you. I'd love to continue to work with you. But what I do is I, I, I want to play big. And for me to be able to justify the, the rates that I charge, I have to be able to deliver results. And when I don't have the ability to positively impact this in a way that I know, I don't know that long-term I'm going to be able to justify this. So I don't know if it's going to make sense. That can be a scary thing to say to, to somebody. And if you if you're, have two clients, then you're risking going down to one client. But when you have 75 clients and you're going down to 74, it doesn't seem as scary. What is going to happen is probably not what, like, you use that at your own risk and you deliver it. Like if you deliver it, 
with, I would feel really confident delivering it to those people in that tone and in that manner. And I, I would expect that it would sound scary to somebody, but I would also be really confident that the result is that they're, they're going to come back to me. Like, just cause like I'm showing, I'm not desperate. Like, and, and whatever things that you have that you can show like, Hey, here's 10,000 leads that came in last month in our agency for the people that are working for us, working with us, they've allowed us to do this. So this is what you have, like, you've got to, um, it's hard, it's hard when you're the nice guy to try to like draw the line with this, but you don't have the ability to get paid a lot of money until they, until you deliver a lot of results and you don't have the ability to deliver a lot of results until they let you fix this circus that's been created in here. So what are you really potentially missing out on? Like probably not that much because there's like long-term it's not going to work. You can't get, I, I don't know what they're paying you, but I imagine they're not going to pay you two or $3,000 a month for not getting any results for very long. Right. I just, I, I, I don't know. That's, that's my opinion. Um, there's a number of things that, that you've got control of the GMB. You can, you can probably start like as weak as this competition appears to be to me. Um, you can probably start to get things to move without even controlling major parts of their site, but you're just never, this company's crushing it. Like when usually when I see a map like this, where there's all ones, that means that the competition is weak because otherwise they're, they're, people would be fine. You're not, you're not going to go into like Las Vegas air conditioning and see one company who's just got ones all over the whole, this is, it's never going to happen. Right. When it's like this though, then like that, that usually means that, that other people aren't doing things to be competitive. Yeah. That, uh, that scale shows like that's a 20 or 30 mile um, area. It's a massive so, area, right? Oh no, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be ranking like that. They can only be ranking that way if everybody else is just like not really playing the game, right? I mean, yeah, it, it, it is a little bit of a, a rural. I mean, we're talking an agricultural yeah. area. We're talking in that big radius, you're probably 300 to 500,000 people total in that, right. in that radius. Maybe not even that, probably 300,000. Yeah, so, so this is further going into the point that like this is a rural area. It's probably not going to be ultra competitive, right? Like if you can just... Like what Davey's saying here is every single time, like somebody comes in and like SEO, SEO, and I'm like, hey, let me show you that in my mind, this is what I'm thinking. Let me show you that I'm the best option that you have, but SEO is not an option. What we do is this. Do you want to work with us? Do you want to work with the top dog? Because if you don't, that's totally cool, but this is what we're willing to do. Like we'll build this. I'm not going to charge you for the site. I'm going to charge you for the business. Okay. You don't have a risk here. You can cancel anytime. I don't need a contract. I'm going to let my value be the reason that you stay working with us. So we have, um, I don't know, 70 something clients. We have one SEO client, right? And the only reason we took on this SEO client is because he has the potential. He's got like a really good book of business that he can send us, right? So it's kind of like we made a special exception for him. Also, he's like Jeff's buddy. So, but for the most part, I just like, that's not, no one ever came to me and said, Hey, I want to build, I want you to build me a site that you own and, and that, that we buy the leads from, and you can cancel anytime. Like no one ever said that all these people come in with SEO type ideas. And it's our job to transition that desire into like, this is lead gen. That's what we do. Right. I'm not going to like, and, and you want to, you know, present it to them in a way and it is mutually beneficial. Right. Like, hey, you guys focus on building metal buildings because that's what you're good at. And let me just take over the technology for you guys and I'm going to handle this. So through this, we're going to have a partnership. I get paid when I send you results. You can cancel any time, right? So, so when you kind of put it that way, it doesn't seem like, well, like I, I wouldn't spend a ton of time focusing on the fact that they don't own it and that you can can't like, right? So just phrase this the, the way that makes sense. Does that make sense, David? Okay, cool. All right, so uh, yeah, just for you know the the people out there that are, I think my internet's going out, but I was just going to say for the people out there that maybe don't have the perspective of you know why why we did take on that one SEO client. It's like a lead gen for us, you know. It's like we're it's almost like an investment of time so that we have 
some leads at higher level uh, in higher level niches that we don't otherwise have immediate access to. So it's it's a strategic play. It's not just like we decided off the cuff to accept an SEO client. That's not our model at all. You know, just to clarify. Yep, absolutely. Um, you hear that. No, you we got it, man. We got it. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent. Uh, that's a hundred percent how, how we chose that one. And, um, even while we're doing it, our conversations within the team are so different where, you know, it's like, we need to make money every single month off this client. Like our budget is really, we limit it to make sure that we're taking cash away every single month. We're never going to go in the red on an SEO client. Right. So, but if, if they're paying us a thousand dollars a month, I want $500 going into my pocket because I, I, just worried that I'm, I could potentially lose this client. Whereas if it was a lead gen, I don't mind as much going to the red because I know once I get it dialed in, I'll get paid on it forever, right? It's just like, it's like I'm buying a house. I'm gonna be able to rent a room in that house or, or rent the house. Like it, it's, it's always gonna have some sort of value, right? So, okay, cool. Um, do we have any other questions on here? Hey, thanks guys for the input. You're welcome. I know that was probably a lot more than you asked, but uh, hopefully other people will find value in it too. Okay, cool. Um, so one thing that I wanted to do that I said at the beginning of the call that I was going to do is, is talk about due diligence. Okay, so I'm going to drop a file into our group. Um, let's just bring it up here. This is something that's been around. It's been in, it's been in the JK group. It's been in other places. This is the home advisor list of um, how much they pay in 2020. These are the averages. Okay. So this will be available to you guys in our group. You can grab it. Okay. So here's some of the original criteria that I'm going to look at when I'm trying to select a niche. Okay. Now I'm going to go through here and I'm going to kind of be balancing this. You know, you should be able to open up this in an Excel file, and then you could probably sort by, um, average ticket price, but you like, you want to look at this because you were obviously you're going to want leads that are going to be um, more valuable. Right. And you want to balance this with a few different things. So let's look at this one, computer repair. It has a $22 lead cost. It's not that I hate this $22 lead cost, but what I hate is the price for computer repair. Right. That's what is that? A hundred bucks. $200 depends, I guess it depends, like if there's a part that you have to replace, but it's just not, it's not a really profitable business model for most people. Um, the ones that have higher dollars, like this one, home theater system or media center install, like the, their, their profit margin is, there's a correlation between this cost and the ticket price, obviously, right? No one's gonna pay $100 for a service that costs $110. So this is probably a, $1,500 service or something, if they're paying hundred, maybe more. I don't know. I don't know what that is, um, but I would be paying attention to that. So this is a great resource for looking at that, but it's also a way to get off the beaten path of common niches. This is not one you want to go into, right? Locksmith. Um, if, and look at this. So auto glass, right? Another thing that I want you guys to consider when you're trying to pick your niche is how hard is it to start a business in this industry? There's going to be a correlation between how hard it is to start a company and how much competition there is. The easier it is, like I think for Autoglass, you can go to you can go to a class for like a week and you can get your license. And I don't think it's a licensed trade in a lot of states. So the barrier to entry is pretty low for that. It's much harder to start like a, um, let's keep going down here, cabinet installation company. That's probably harder to start, right? Because it's like, you have to have some serious skills. You're not gonna learn that in a week. Maybe you are if you're, maybe if you're just installing them, but if you're actually designing them, that's, that's, a, whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. So keep that in mind. There's also equipment that's gonna be necessary for, um, you know, a lot of these niches that's gonna keep people out. So like the one, that I often use as an example, just to really drive it home is um, like a pool installation company. Like that's, it's not the weekend warrior doesn't just like roll out of bed and say, I'm going to start this pool installation company. You got to have like excavators and, or you, you know, maybe they're subcontracted. They've got to have stuff in place. 
then you're almost always going to need a license for that. So the competition is going to go down. The leads are going to be really valuable. So this is a great resource for finding things that you probably wouldn't think to do, right? Like an outdoor mist cooling system. This may be like really easy to rank for. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that could be a good niche. I don't think it's worth, I, I don't know what the installation costs on that, but, but I like to target at least $750 minimum ticket price. That's kind of like where I want to be. Um, you know, so this list is going to give you a ton of ideas of, of potential niches. Okay. So that's a great starting spot. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to look at um, cities by population. United States. Okay, so you can do this. I know you Aussies, I, uh, you know, you, you could also be running your stuff here as well. Like I, I would almost recommend for the people in Australia, I've heard that the, um, you know, it's a lot better to do lead gen in the United States than it is to do Australia. So, the, the, you know, I was in Spain and I was growing my, my legion business in the United States as well. So I know that it's, it's absolutely possible. So now I've got a list of all the cities by population. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to like, um, let's go to like a hundred somewhere around here. So Tamp, uh, Tacoma, I'm going to start to work my way up. I'm going to look at these cities that are in this area. So I'm not going to go after like these ones up at the top here because they're probably going to be more competitive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, bright local. So this is a free service. I'll put this in the um, in our chat here, and I'll put it in the Facebook chat as well. Okay, cool. So let's say I look at that list. I'm just going to pick a random one off of that. Um, man, I just lost it. Now one second, guys. I lost my Home Advisor. Okay, there it is. Okay, so. Um, let's look through one that looks attractive to me. Um, deck and porch, this, this right here, look at this, $73, $91. Okay, so now we need to know what the term is that we're gonna, um, that we're gonna want. So let's go over here to Google real quick. And I'm just gonna type in deck. I'll type, this is what I would search for. So that's gonna be my first term is I'm gonna type in deck builder. And um, I'm going to look at the ideas down here for related search. Okay. If you guys have a tool, like earlier I had Ahrefs open, that would be another spot you can go. If any of you guys are running ads, I really like the keyword planner tool. So let's just search for like deck builder near me or something like this. We can start to get some volume deck builder near me. So usually when you see near me after something, this will also have good search volume, Deck Builder on its own. So just for this, you can see right here, 9,200 searches a month for Deck Builder. Okay, that's the best term, or maybe it's not. Maybe there's another Deck Construction, I don't know. But let's pretend that, like, that's a lot of search volume, Deck Builder, 9,200 a month. I'm, I'm fine with ranking well for that. So now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna choose. So what Bright Local does is it allows you to do a clean search as if you're in this location, but unlike the heat map, it's only gonna give you pick one spot, but I just need, I need something to get me into the heat map. That's what I'm looking for is I need, I need like a company to start with in the heat map, okay? So I think one of the cities we had uh, was Tacoma, right? I believe Tacoma is in, Washington, right? Is that right? Tacoma, Washington. Yeah. Okay. So we got 217,000 people in Tacoma, Washington. So I'm going to just do a search now for deck builder. And then I'm going to put over here, I'm going to do Tacoma WA. So it's going to pick some centralized location to perform this search. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to wait for it. Now what I need to do is I need to click on this and it's going to show me the search results. Okay, so this is what they look like. We've got people running ads. That's great. I love to see that people are willing to pay for stuff. We already know that um, based on that elusive PDF that it's between like 70 and $92 for a lead average across it. That's a, that's a good size number. Like you sending a hundred leads a month, that's almost $10,000 in, in leads, right? So maybe hard to get a hundred leads in Tacoma, I don't know. Um, 
hold on one second. We got an issue. Okay, there we go. This is the one we were looking at, right? Look at this. This is what I'm looking for. Deck Builders, the first company, and we don't know, this is only one spot on the map, remember? We don't know like if this is really the top ranking company. So this is where lead generated comes into play, but I love to see that at least in one spot on the map that this company with no reviews is ranking first and this company is ranking third. So there's two on here that Dr. Dex looks like he may be the top dog in town because um, his, his thing's here. You can actually see this is an inner page that's ranked for him, Tacoma-Dex. Okay, so I'm gonna choose Dr. Dex because it's my suspicion that he's probably gonna be ranking better than these other two ones based on the fact that he has reviews and he's the number one organic for this term. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I want, what, what this is about is I want to get to his heat map. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna look for Dr. Dex. How did he have that in there? It's really weird that it's not giving me any results. Um, okay, so that's it, Tacoma, Washington right here. We've got his GMB up. So now I'm going to take this and I'm gonna use this to go back into the heat map, right? So I'm, gonna, I'm just grabbing his map URL. So the reason I'm doing this is not that I necessarily care about his ranking, but what I wanna know is I wanna know how tough the top person in town is. And I wanna identify who that is. So it was deck builders, right? Was our term. Let me just double check that. I have that right. Deck builder, okay. Um, so I'm gonna do exactly that term, deck builder. I'm gonna set this to be one mile to start. I'm gonna adjust this once it gets out there. Just make sure I get Tacoma. Sorry, I'm um, Patrick. Wasn't the name of that GMB different than the one you just searched? No, this is it right here, right? Dr. Dex? Dr. Dex, yeah. Eight reviews. If we go back here, Dr. Dex, eight reviews. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I'm sorry. I thought you were doing Tacoma deck builders. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so we can see that that he's the map kind of drew a pretty good job of Tacoma, but I think we can just oh that's really close to Seattle, huh? Uh, which is great. That's another thing I really like to see is when there's like big cities to that. Because here's what's going to happen in my mind is I'm going to take over this Tacoma area and I'm going to find a client that wants to grow. And then I'm going to go after Seattle next. And I'm going to just, I'm going to, and when that happens, Seattle is probably a bigger city, I, I think, uh, higher and Olympia down there. So there's some, like, I, I want to find a client where I can take over multiple cities because I want to turn this client into a five, $7,000 a month client. And to do that, I'm going to take over all of these cities. So it's great when you find these like big cities that are next to each other, but when they're not so big where it's like, you know, like, like, you know, they have a few hundred thousand people where it's not like a million city next to a million next to a million, right? Which are like, you know, LA, for instance, it's just going to be like huge city after huge city. This one seems like it's, it's going to be a little bit more isolated, but there's still some big cities. So I would want to take over all of these cities. So I'm going to start it like this. Okay, so we'll give this thing a second. Hopefully we don't get stuck down. Okay, it's already starting, which is great. Um, so this isn't necessarily, as I'm saying, this isn't necessarily to see how this guy's ranking. What I wanna see is the average. I wanna see who's number one, and then I'm gonna dive down and do my due diligence on that company, whoever number one is, whether this is Dr. Dex or whether it's like that other Tacoma site. So some of this stuff I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna look at, let's just dive in to Dr. Dex and you guys can perform this same, pretend that Dr. Dex came out on top, right? So this is, a, this is a lot about what we were just going through when we were looking at David's stuff is I'm looking for a site like that big red metal site. I would love to see a site like that where I'm just like, these guys did a bad job. So one of the things that I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna, Turn on my little majestic thing. This is free. Hold on one second. You have to spell it right. Okay, so this is a free plugin. You don't need a subscription. Um, why does it always do that? All right, cool. So it's going to make me authenticate real quick. So it's going to say this, prove you're not a robot. I've heard that some people outside the United States have had issues getting this to work. Um, 
And I think there's ways around it. I, I think maybe if you use a VPN, you might be able to get it to work. I am the worst person in the world at this CAPTCHA stuff. So we might be here for 10 minutes trying to get sorted through this thing. All right, cool, I got it right. Okay, so this is gonna give me this uh, backlink profile and I can see that Dr. Dex has an eight and a 28. So I personally would like to know more information, but for those of you guys that are still trying to get ramped up, I know that there's a lot of new people on this call. Um, maybe you don't have the Ahrefs subscription, but we can get some cursory data here, eight, Trust flow of eight, that's not high, okay? He's got 111 backlinks, which is like, that's not, that's not too bad. Um, that, that's, that's a good amount of backlinks, right? But they're not very strong if he's got 111 and there's only eight here. So we're gonna dive in and look at the content that he has on his page, which this is not a lot of content, right? Look at this, there's barely any here. Uh, another good tool that you guys might like it, that I use when I'm doing my due diligence is the word count tool, which is this little weird ribbon thing here. Um, where did it go? I don't know why it's not showing right now. Let me just check something here. What it does is it usually puts a little item in here, but we can just easy enough. I'm going to just look at this and copy this text. And then you can just go here and type in word count tool and paste this in here. But I'm guessing he has less than 500 words, somewhere around there, less than 500 words on this page. And this is including things like the footer and the navigation in it. So he's got 900 words on here, but I think if you deleted some of this like nonsense, that's not really terms or anything, then, you know, um, I don't know how much actual content he has. Right. So not, not a ton of words though. Like, um, like if we deleted, I don't know, I bet he's got five or 600 real words on here where it's actually content. He's just got a lot of like list of other pages and, and, and things that aren't going to contribute a lot so much towards it. You can also see he's got like spelling errors and stuff throughout, throughout this page, um, which Google is absolutely going to consider. I'm going to do a site index on his site. And I'm going to see the pages and I want to look at his meta title. So he's got 20 pages potentially indexed in here. He's using Dr. Dex a few times. He's got about. Um, so it looks like he's got some, maybe these are keywords in this niche. I don't think they're going to be the top keywords that people are searching for. So I think there's some weakness there. You can see there's a Tacoma Dex page. He's done, uh, he's obviously done a better job than Big Red Metals did. Um, He's actually got 18 pages. So if you click on the second page, you can see um, he's got deck in there quite a bit. I like that he's got this three, 3D design that looks legit when you start seeing stuff like that. And I think Google looks at this stuff in like through a different lens when, when you like start talking about tools and, and this type of thing. Um, he's going over patio cover. So he's done an okay job of writing the meta for this. So now let's go back here and now our heat map is, is done, right? So I'm just gonna refresh this and make sure it says completed. So the information I was after is this averages. This is, this is like what I wanted. So Dr. Dex is not the top person in town. We, can, we know that it's actually this company. So Dr. Dex is ranking just slightly worse, 4.05 average, 4.43 average. So just so you guys know, what we're doing is we're taking all the points on this map, we're adding them up and divided by the total number of points. So that's what that average is. So that average is out to be 4.43 for Dr. Dex, which these are gonna be pretty similar. Like this guy's not crushing him. So they're probably pretty similar in this. I know that this exists, This what this means, and, and we're gonna fix this, that's the ampersand right there. So HDK and Sons is the top person in town. So we could go back to this maps, Google here. I know that I'm going fast. Um, HDK and Sons. Looks like this guy has two different GMB set up. Okay, that's something you're going to want to take into account. If we go back and look at this, I'm curious to see if both of his are ranking. Um, okay, so it doesn't look like maybe he's got it set up in a different location and he's not really ranking in this location, but that to me, the fact that he's got multiple GMBs, there's like some credibility there for me in, in, in like thinking that this guy 
has been smart. Like a lot of people don't even know what one GMB is, but this guy took it a step further to set up a second one. I still don't think it's going to be really tough. You can see that this site looks like it has more content than the first one in my mind. Um, it looks a little bit better. Let's look at their stuff. This would be a niche that, that I would be happy to go into. If you guys are, anybody's looking for niches out, I think this is weak. I think the leads are going to be worth a lot. And I love the fact that it's next to Seattle and also Olympia. I'd like to see the population for these. Let's see what Seattle's population is. 3.4 million. So that, that's great um, because we can, we, there, we can go after it, but um, th that's, gonna be a, that's gonna be a tougher challenge most likely than Tacoma. So we can start in Tacoma, start to get stuff going in, build a site. I would build a site in Tacoma and in Seattle. I would start with Tacoma and then I would add Seattle on after I have a paying client maybe, or maybe just get something up, get like a two page site with the home page and the contact page so you can start that that aging process right let's look at olympia so we got another city right there we saw that tacoma was like 217,000 or something right uh olympia 53,000 there's just a lot of people that are, are going to be surrounding this area um which is awesome because there's going to be people in between these cities even though that city has like 53,000 You've got this city right next to it that has 217,000 and another one that has 3 million, right? So this is, this is one, if, if you find a person that, that can cover the, this whole area, this could be a $5,000 a month client once you've got this take it, taken over, right? Just so much potential in that. And we can, like, I think Tacoma's weak based on what I've seen, right? I didn't do, I would also be taking these guys um, let's go look at these HDK and Sons people. I'm going to look at their backlink profile. 328. It's pretty weak. Let's put these guys into Ahrefs and see. Let's see it, like how, what their backlinks look like. So what you don't want to see is a bunch of like niche relevant backlinks in a star on profile. Big, big difference between this and Majestic, right? I trust Ahrefs more personally. Okay. Um, you can see this is, these are, these are numbers that I don't like as much. Like, I, I like this, the value uh, or like the difficulty of this niche just went up just a little bit for me when I saw that this is 2127. Um, I still think it's really weak. You can see that their link is coming from Home Advisor. Okay, I didn't even know that they pass those out, but home, apparently Home Advisor passes out links to everyone because this is a 91 and a 15, as we talked about earlier. Like they're not getting a ton of juice, they're getting some because Home Advisor is like a big brand. This is also also a niche relevant link, which is great. This is a lot better than Yelp pages. You could also see that they have a link from the Better Business Bureau, so they're in there. Um, looks like they've got a furnace cleaning link. It almost looks like somebody did um, link building for them and, and kind of knew to try to get some of this stuff. When I see that they have this like furnace cleaning link, like how, why would that be there? That, I don't know. Um, they got a 301 redirect, which is also like, so that 301 redirect is when you're saying, hey, this is permanently moved to this other location. So they're getting essentially all the, uh, all the links that are, that are coming in, it, well, they're just redirecting from the www to the main domain, but just pay attention to this stuff over here. It'll tell you if it's no follow. Um, it doesn't look super tough to me. Okay, I'm I'm not scared of it, but like they do have some niche relevant links, like this North Haven remodeling. I still would probably go into it. I'm just a little disappointed that they have niche relevant links, where I love to see them not have those, like. We saw the big red metals had yellow pages and stuff like that. Like niche relevant links are harder to get, right? And the stronger links are harder to get. So that's why it's important to kind of study some of this backlink stuff as a part of your due diligence. So what I would do is I would go in and I would take this stuff into account and I would go and build my due diligence worksheets in here. So I'm going to create my own worksheet and I'm going to put the stuff that we talked about. I wouldn't necessarily personally use the JK one I would want to know like what is like I want to know the population. I want to know like um, who the top competitors are. 
How, like, how many pages do they have? How many words? Those are some of the things. How many reviews do they have? Okay, so we basically use the heat map to find out that HDK and that um, Dr. Dex are the two top companies in town. We looked at their, their various attributes that contribute to their ranking, and we see that they're not very strong. Eight reviews is not that many, right? Like, you could get 175 reviews, right, and, and blow them out of the water. It may take you some time and it may take you some social engineering on how to create that, but we're able to get people to allow us to mail a postcard to their address. I can imagine we could find a way to get someone to write a few words, right, for, from this review, especially with the, the strength of the people in this, in this group. Okay, so um, that, was, that was kind of the due diligence thing that I wanted to cover for today because I know that some of you guys are, are struggling choosing niches. So combining the two lessons that we learned from last week, where you've got, um, you know, you've got the, the quick cash method and here's a way to choose good niches. I think this is excellent stuff if you're in the beginning to focus on and, and use this heat map to do your due diligence if you don't have clients yet. Once you have clients, do you use this to find ways to improve your rankings like we did with David. Once, once you have the thing ranking and leads coming in and it's time to find clients, use this as a way to find new clients and, you know, as, as a prospecting tool, it's, it's, it's lights out for prospecting. Okay. So I'm going to circle through here and just see, Jeff, do you know if there's any, if there's any questions or does anybody have a question they want to ask? Because if not, we've been on here for two and a half hours. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this thing up, but yeah, I'm happy I'm not, to answer any final questions. Out of me, Patrick. Okay. I know that was a little bit fast through it, but I wanted to, um, I, I wanted to make sure that, that you guys had that, that piece of it because I, I wanted to make sure that aside from just answering questions on different functions and features within Lead Generated that I give you guys some nuggets that you can use to try to improve your, um, your lead generation business as well. So um, cool. All right, well, if there's no final questions, um, it was great to see the guys that are on the Zoom. And um, yep, yeah, like I said, if you're not, if, if you're not in the uh, Facebook group yet, Join it. We're going to be doing these calls every every Wednesday at 630. If there's anybody that you know that you think would benefit from this or is using this that that isn't a part of the group, uh, be sure and invite them in. So I appreciate you guys. Let me know what questions you guys have and um, enjoy the rest of your week and we'll talk soon. Thanks a lot.